Goku. Axel. Vincent. Sir Venom. <laughs> he teleported from Waterdeep back to Neverwinter, deciding to check out shenanigans and how your reopening was coming along. You briefly spoke with Morty and Commander Kant, your house Carl, who informed you that Morty's love of the ale had continued, but the fire in his belly was not quenched by it. Shenanigans was being prepped for a reopening. You decided to take a shopping trip, heading off to Aurora's realms, and of course, per usual, they had a job awaiting you. When you spoke to them, they asked that you deliver their agent to a portal deep within what they believed to be a mine. And as you went to this place, you found numerous dead Darrow, dwarven-like creatures who have been hoarding their wealth underground in a more malicious fashion than your typical dwarf. Here, in this mine full of dead Darrow, you delved deeper and deeper until you stumbled upon a cavern at the back, filled with dead bodies everywhere, and a light shining into a room with enormous crystals with an Andro Sphinx guarding the portal at the back. After speaking to the Sphinx who swung, who swung around into the large section of the mine, he presented you with an option. Provide him with either an object which you knew existed somewhere else, a riddle that he could not solve, or a fight he could not win. And so you chose the latter, providing him with a battle, slaying the creature, and bringing the envoy of Aurora's realms to the back of the mine. Here, you were teleported back, gaining a teleportation circle. The portal near the teleportation circle that you delivered the envoy to had the words written upon it to Greyhawk, the place of O-Earth, a land that you may have heard of, may not have heard of, but was definitely foreign. And so you returned to Aurora's realms with a new location sort of in the back of your minds to explore. Another successful check mark on your list of jobs for them and the desire to see shenanigans reopened. You plan on, after reopening shenanigans, going back to Waterdeep and jumping on the ship that the Order of the Gauntlet has been preparing for you. And so it is one day out from the reopening of shenanigans. If there is anything you would like to do in between now and the reopening, please say so. I can bounce us around as needed. If you'd like me to drop you directly into shenanigans, I can also do that. I'm probably just going to sleep. Try to get rid of this exhaustion. Say, oh, yeah. we're all long rested. Yeah. Uh, it, it's been uh, technically, um, Sir Venom, it's actually been two more days. So you have, you fully long rested and your exhaustion is gone, I believe. Sweet. Okay. Very good. Um, did, uh, did Morty say he needed, like, help with anything, like, during this time? Uh, he, Morty is not in need of anything to reopen shenanigans at this moment in time. Um, it's mostly marketing that he's in the process of, uh, and every mission that you succeed with Aurora's Realm helps with this. Uh, your endeavors down in Waterdeep will most assuredly help with this. And so it's a reputation building exercise more than anything. Yeah, it's like it's the new hot bar in town. It's like, did you hear about the owners? They're crazy heroes, like basically, right? Very much so. In fact, especially, and this is because of the, um, oh gosh, what uh, I will tell you the name of this um, business if you give me two seconds. Uh, there is a business that sends. Ah, Eric Crocra Ariel. Um, Eric Crocra Ariel provides uh, fast communication up and down the Sword Coast. And 
in the few days that you have been in Neverwinter, you have been realizing that more and more people have been pointing you out on the street. And you suspect it's due to letters arriving from Waterdeep detailing your, your deeds effectively. Riku needs to make like a song or a ballad about us and our exploits. I mean, that's that that pretty much goes without saying. He's constantly doing that. You can just you can just assume that's always happening. But we need a billboard. At, at any rate, it's it's gonna. I'd say it's 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 gonna be odd for us walking around town, just like kind of you know we're starting to gain some clout. <laughs> we're those guys. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I like it though. I like it. Um, if in regards to that, actually, Rico, do you want to help me? Would you like to give me a persuasion check? We're going to run some of the carousing rules here briefly. Ooh. Um, and I'm going to give you advantage on this. And if you are, if Riku is actively going about town doing some level of this, and this will go towards shenanigans on some level as well as yourselves, uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion check, and let's roll that advantage and see what you get. Oh my! All right, that's pretty good. Not um, bad with the modifier. All right, so this is actually going to do a few different things for you. One. It's going to give you a blanket 10% discount for yourselves and the roosters across Neverwinter. Two, it's going to earn you two contacts within Neverwinter. Um, let me just pull up something. Uh, Ooh, people are a fan of her work. Yeah. And in fact... We're going to roll some, some stuff on a table here to see who these folk are. Cool. I had an idea, guys. What if we invite Irina on the boat? Wouldn't that be something she'd like to do? Um, See her like travel and see stuff anyway, right? I guess it's kind of, we're going into like, we're doing bad stuff. I just want to do that. It's dangerous territory. Hmm. Hey, we can, you can always ask her. Hmm. Yeah, I do have sending, so. Can somebody please roll me uh, a d12 twice? I rolled the last one. Someone else twelves. I haven't rolled yet. I'll roll. Okay. Yeah, it's your birthday. Roll. All right, what do we got? What do you want? Uh, a d12 twice. Can I roll two of them? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Five and a two. This could mean different things, so I don't think the lower high matters. Well, two. Yeah, well. Uh, okay, so go ahead and roll me a d8, please. Six. Uh, and so one of the individuals who you have gained as a contact um, is an old mariner. Funny enough. Um, let me just really? pull up. Yeah. How it's an old mariner. <laughs> no, That's honestly, great. that was like totally random too. Funny enough. I know. I believe it, which is great. You know, the uh, way this game works sometimes, you know. This old mariner's name is El Elman Vane. E-L-M-A-N-V-A-Y-N-E. -E. They are currently poor and elver elderly, and they're elven. Uh, they actually live down the street from you within the Blake, uh, Black Lake District. And the word on the street is that they owe the city of Neverwinter and Dagal Neverember 20,000 gold pieces. Hmm. Um, they live in a place called Liberation House. It's a decrepit and worn down manor. Uh, and the 
the word on the street and um whether or not you know this is going to be dependent on a check if you'd like for your characters to know this but the word on the street is that they are close to their remembrance and or revelation what does that mean uh so riku you get to roll advantage on this because you're half elven everybody yeah. else if you would like to know about this it would be a history check Incoming. Oh, 19. Oh, wow. That's good enough, Vincent. You would have heard this in, upon your travels. Same with Axel. So I roll a and, history? Yep, at advantage for you. And Sir Venom, too. And it was a 15 cutoff, so everybody knows this. You know that the remembrance or the revelation is the time in an old elven life when they begin to think back through their past lives or the gen the past lives of the generations that have come before them all the way back to their god Corallon up through to the time before the elves were even a people when they lived in a place called Arvandor and that is one of the realms beyond and so the remembrance is sort of when they begin to kind of pass from this mortal material plane to a different place. Like, you're going to die soon, basically? Very old. Yeah. So that would be, be like El centuries v. old. And he's 20k oh, yeah. in debt? 20k in debt to the city of Neverwinter. And poor? Quite poor. Yep. What do you yeah. do with his 20k? Once upon a time, he was very wealthy, though, because you know that he owns a home in the Black Lake District. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what Seems district? like, oh, wait, like oh, the Ember maybe swindled him, you know? That's what it kind of feels like is implied. Well, uh, Riku, you know, was eager to perhaps invite him along, but I don't know. Maybe we, we'll speak with him. See what he has to say before we go uh, any further. Um, it, it sounds sounds interesting because we we could get some like uh, more of a perspective on uh, Never Ember too. The for your other contact, let's go ahead and roll a d twenty for that. Uh, someone else can go. I did good. I'll do it. Four. A four. And then can I get a uh, D8 as well, please? One. Okay. Um, so this would be the Laborers Guild of Neverwinter, which ends up being one of your contacts. Um, and they come to you uh, with an invitation to a large manor that's actually doubling as like a like a, a laborer's hostel. And uh, they are looking for a tract of land somewhere up and down the, the Sword Coast, preferably between Neverwinter and Waterdeep, that if you ever find a good one for them, something that has a port to it, that they would ask that um, you send them a location and uh, they're looking to purchase such a land. Um, and maybe uh, negotiate it for them if you'd be interested in taking on this work. They'd offer you 100 gold for it. Uh, Riku kind of shrugs. And so I'm like, with the group, I'd be like, does anybody uh, want to take care of this? Kind of, I don't know, seems like busy work to me. Uh, I mean, I guess if we're, if we're in the area and we come across something, might as well. What's their, we got to find out, what's their, uh, like, how much do they have to spend on such a, such a thing? Oh, they really don't have a lot. Just a hundred gold, just because um, they're a uh, a unionized laborers group that's basically located so within Neverwinter. There's land we you can spend a hundred gold on, and you can buy land for a hundred gold. They would pay you for the negotiation of the purchase of said land. Yeah. But, oh. Okay. Uh. They want you to be realtors, basically. Yeah, but like. When we're out there looking, like if there's like a nice little spot on the coast, but it's like a hundred 
a hundred grand, like they obviously wouldn't be able to afford that. So like, what? How much? What exactly are we looking for? Oh, uh, they're, they're looking what's their for price range. Sorry, they're looking for an uninhabited piece of land, an unclaimed piece of land. Huh. Oh, okay. And they would they preferably to... like it to have no monsters as well. So they just want to be squatters. A little bit. All right. He wants to find them a chunk of land along the uh, coast, basically, between here and everyone they can claim. That's uh. Well, maybe we find it, claim it, and then we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell. <clears throat> yeah, no, we would never do that. Well, I, I didn't say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> that was just yeah. Oh uh, no, it just yeah. Feels like this you is know. a lot of work for a uh, hundred gold. <laughs> oh, you damn. Oh. There goes that contact. I don't know. That's why I was asking if someone else wants to handle this. Yeah, one. well, so, so then I'm gonna, so then I'm gonna agree that uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be out and about on the seas for for a while. We'll we'll keep an eye out, and if we find anything, we will, uh, we'll send contact. I suppose if we did this, then that would be kind of like, like, uh, you know, how do you say, not like an ally, but like, uh, you know, they would Con- be in our debt. Showing a good faith. Yeah, so if we ever needed uh, some minions on the coast or something. Yeah, we'll help them. It could, yeah. We're such good people. Okay. The group has decided. Um. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, And so you say, you know, uh, no time frame associated to it. You're willing to take on their cause if it comes across your path effectively by the sound of it, and they're happy enough with your answer. Um, about a day later, you hear uh, Union uh, Laborers Guild empowered by the heroes of Waterdeep being shouted by a town crier through the city oh, of Neverwinter. Champions of the people. Us. Our, um, our workers like unionized? These ones are in particular. I would like the ones that work at our casino. Are they in a union? <laughs> uh, they are not. Uh, and you have no yeah, idea if they've not. spoken about that or not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They well, uh, part of the deal. The door. Part of the deal with these lay union people <laughs> is that they keep that shit out of our casino. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Make a. Axel, go ahead and make a persuasion check for that. Ooh. Say that you had that. Uh. Can I do what intimidation? Of... Can I intimidate them into? Sure. Yeah. Strokes his axe. Eh, Fourteen. Uh, they hear you. Yeah. They promise nothing, but you can see the looks on their faces. They're not exactly thrilled about it, but they don't push back against you. Okay. And yeah, we'll take good care of you, Ricky says. Yeah. Okay. Flash a smile. What um, uh, district does um is my uh, house in? It is right next door, so it's in the Black Lake district up here. As well, okay. You right. you have a piece of property upon. Oh yeah, that was one thing I meant to start us off with. Sorry, Vincent. Um, would you like to see the potential properties, or excuse me, the potential um architectural drawings of your property? Uh, of course. Okay. So a bard comes by. And it's a, a glamour bard. You know that these bards in particular, Riku, are typically um, used to put on parties and or um, show off visions from afar because they're incredibly talented illusionists. And so in this instance, this glamour bard comes by and uh, when you see him, Vincent, he goes, ah, yes, uh, the uh, wizard architects have uh, sent me forth with a number of different with a number of different uh architectural showings to provide you with come let's move down to the water and he leads you to your empty plot of land and he says now imagine this beautiful piece of land with a wonderful rustic cabin and you and the bard are suddenly standing within this sort of holographic cabin. There's a garden out back. It's a one-room little rustic thing. But it's quaint. It's chill. And he goes, for only 1,000 gold, good Vincent, this could be yours. What think you? 
A thousand gold. What is this? A little log cabin. Um Okay, I mean I like it. Um and I I just want to see what the other options would be. Okay. Okay. Uh, what are you thinking? Bigger? Grander? Um, yeah. Yeah. What would uh, something a little bit bigger be? A little more spacious that might have a little... Uh... Yeah. No. Just a little more space. Sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, let's see. You're looking for something like this, Vincent. A little more spacious. Well, um, yeah, the second one isn't necessarily more spacious, but it's far different, and it's um, maybe a little more tuned to your specialties, and, and you could see more. Um, let's take a look at this. And he throws his hands up, and the illusion changes, and it warps, and it becomes a tower. And this tower is two stories, with a set of stairs going up to the top story. It's a ladder to the first story, and then a set of stairs going up to the, the second story. And he goes, oh, there's a little more room, and um, you know, you've know, you got your garden area basically up on the first floor, and then you've got your home up on the second floor. Uh, and he's like sort of showing you, and instead of flying up through the illusion, the illusion sort of falls down through the ground to you so you can see it without having to move. And sort of like swirling around you slowly. Uh, yeah, I like this. That was pretty cool. Yeah, oh, the ranger okay. outfit. That is dope as hell. This seems well, a little more like ninja ranger fighter outpost. This reminds me of someone uh ate something in Minecraft. Yeah, it's it's still cool though. Well, uh, so this outpost, this one would run you 3,000 gold. The, the cons I know it's not much larger than the other. The construction, however, is significantly more complex and therefore more expensive. Um, but what we could put it here. It would be one of the taller structures in all of Neverwinter. We're clearly not as tall as Castle Never. And he points down to the southwest. Uh, and you can see one of the spires of Castle Never sort of poking up over the helms across the Black Lake. But it would be wonderful nonetheless. You'd have a view of the city. Very few have. Um. Yeah, so I'll take it. Uh, you sure you don't want to see the last one? You should uh, at least see. Well, uh, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I want to see the last one. Okay. But this is Hold definitely, yeah, uh, yeah. This next one is very expensive. It would rival your current home, but huh. it will be magnificent. And he claps his hands, and as he does so, all of the illusion sort of turns to like a golden dust and then begins to reform into what I would call the Ranger's Lake Manor. And it's this beautiful, immaculate setting on the coast of the lake. And it's quite large, frankly. Probably too large for just one person. All right, how much is this one? This one is 9,000 gold. And as it's like sort of swirling it around you so you can see every room without having to move yourself, um, I can swap it over to the second floor whenever you would like. Uh, sure. Let's take a, take a peek. Okay. <laughs> uh, boys, do we want a like a, a mansion pad part two? Or, uh, we don't really need that. This is extravagant. I thought you were going to get a shed. Yeah, a shed yeah. with an archery range. <laughs> yeah, no. I like the the second one, and obviously unless... Well, unless the second one is like, really cool, just yeah. also as like a defensive like area. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tall. But it's, it's, yeah, the fact yeah. That, like, that we'd be able to have that right next to our house. But it would also suck if, like, someone was going to uh, attack us if they took it over and then used Ooh, it against Ooh, a raid base. Cool. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, not worried about, I'm not worried about that. It'll be booby-trapped as good as Kevin McAllister. I mean, flying is um, pretty pretty easy to come by these days for us. And I imagine not, not too hard for the enemies either. Yeah, it's whatever. I mean, if they're going to break in, they're going to break in. It's a house. Like, what do you mean? Can't be worried about that. Could, people could use it against us if someone were to lay siege to us. But you know what? What? We're not going to get attacked twice, right? Yeah, what are you talking about? Look, I uh, on that we pay. <laughs> we're paying a lot 
in tax for part of that is protection. True, you're right. The guards so, should be protecting us. Yeah. Yeah. Like our our own we have our own security plus the city watch. Very good. Um uh no, let's just yeah, I'll take the second one. Number two is the coolest. Yeah, okay. number two is the, number two is the right answer. And he brings you back to the illusion that is the Rangers outpost with the tower, and he says, then if you hand over the 3,000 gold here and now, good sir, uh, the wizards and myself will make it a reality. Uh, I'll give you half now, uh, and a half when the structure <laughs> is complete. Uh, roll persuasion check. Tough negotiator. <laughs> what is this upfront money? Full. Uh, what do I need? A persuasion? Yeah. Uh, Have a negative one. (laughs) The reaction of a bard. Oh no! (laughs) And he starts to laugh, and he, sir, that's just not how we do things. Um, (laughs) uh, Look, look, look. looks around like confused. (laughs) Uh, I will allow you to say, um, uh, let's do this. Let's do uh, three quarters now, and the rest later. Is that 2,000? Yeah, or it's like 2,500 now. Whatever. How much was it? Total? Five. Uh, three, three grand. Do you, do you not have that? That's like, have it's, I have plenty. Yeah, he's got a lot of platinum. Not, he can pay yeah. in platinum. Yeah. You know what? As a power play, then the full. You'll just hand over three, 300 platinum? Yeah. Okay. And he looks at the platinum in surprise and and then gives you a grin back and says, well, looks like I probably should have charged you 4000 <laughs> uh, But maybe I'm the one who's being swindled. Nonetheless, it's a fair price. What I will say is that it will take roughly four 10-day, five 10-day, so 40 or 50 days to be built fully. Um, the the wooden beams will be reinforced against fire in particular. This place will not be able to burn down. It's one of the benefits of it being built by a wizard. Uh, but nonetheless, it will be your home soon enough. All right. Thank you, kind sir. And he sort of tips his hat and says, indeed, indeed. And um, I mean, if you ever need a song written about you, you know, Jeku the Bard is willing to do so, and he sort of like uh, give an insight check there, Riku. Actually, insight coming a yeah, uh... yeah. With that, you can see his eyes ever so swiftly sort of move over to you nervously, and then back across the group. It, you can tell that he's a little worried about cutting into your turf. Yeah, Riku kind of just. Just gives him a uh, a big smile. Well, um, I'll take the silence as a no for now. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, pleasure doing business with you. And your home will be immaculate, I promise. Yes, I... Better be. And he sort of tips his hat and begins to walk off. Can be a cool house. Very cool. And then, uh, hopefully, and then I still got some room, right, or on the around now. Didn't take up the whole plot of land. You did not. Um, and in fact, it's it takes up very little actual, um, surface area of the plot of land itself, just because it's on those posts. So the plot of land is mostly free still to do as you please. Fantastic. We'll have to uh Should make it like a training. Yeah, well area. that definitely was gonna be like a training, but um I don't know to what degree. Definitely just a, at least an archery range, which isn't much to start. Like obstacle course, like Ninja Warrior style and shit. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean uh 
yeah, well, I would set that. I would wait for my land to be done before I probably did any of the other, uh, the house before I did any of the other stuff. So yeah, let's, uh, what do we got next? We have, uh, we having our casino opening or is that still far, further away? Uh, whatever you guys want. It could be in a, it's in a day's time if you'd like. If you want to fast forward to that, you may do so. If there are other things you'd like to do in, um, uh, within Neverwinter, we can switch to that. Uh, I was thinking about uh, when we get on a boat, um, will a spyglass be provided to whoever is keeping watch, or do we have to buy that ourselves? You think? Uh, at this time, you don't know. Okay. Oh, so that one would want to go buy his own. Perhaps a magical one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can track down like some type of magical spyglass. Uh, yeah. Or, maybe... I have a... I have a captain's hat already, so I need a pirate sword. Um, I need to change my raven to look like a parrot. And then I have my already my fancy magic cloak for being a pirate. And I think I already have an eye patch as well. All right. Uh, you want to hunt down a magic spyglass, though? Yep. Uh, go ahead, make an investigation check. I was gonna say we want we want to know if one such thing even exists. Nineteen. That's pretty good, actually. I was gonna wow. cut the DC off at eighteen. Um, the some of the days where Vincent's viewing his uh, future home, where you're resting. You hit up the markets, you hit up Aurora's Realms, you ask around for a, a magic spyglass. Um, and Aurora's Realms sort of says, mm, we have nothing at this time, but we may be able to find you one within 2.10 day, 3.10 day, roughly, if you're willing to wait. Um, uh, indeed, we can find you a normal spyglass, if you so wish, and we can um, attempt to enchant it. Would this uh, suit your needs? I think uh, we, we don't have two or three ten days to wait. You would need this uh, probably by, by the end of the ten days. How long would uh, it take you to uh, to enchant a normal one? Uh, well, it would just be less powerful, if you understand. And and they sort of say, uh, given three days, I think we can put a spyglass of guidance upon it. It would be very limited, mind you. Uh, is there any 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 way we could uh, maybe expedite getting a more powerful one over here? Maybe I'm, a little little extra gold might speed things up. I'm so sorry. I, I it's it's not a matter of gold. It's a matter of um, resources in terms of. I I mean, if you yourselves aren't going to help us find it, for instance, probably won't be able to do so. Do, do you know where we can find one? Like, we can head out and find it. And, and he kind of looks at you and goes, nope, we have no idea where to find one of these, hence why it's going to be so hard. Um, well, if we did uh, if we did hold out for the more powerful one, we might, uh, we probably, you know, already have shipped out. Would you be able to you know, get it to us while we're out in the ocean? Um, if you allowed us to scry you, yes. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, indeed. So then we, when we have one, uh, you'd be willing to pay for the scrying costs, the costs of goods, the cost of transportation, which is two teleportation spells, one there, one reverse. Is this all correct? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, break it down. Uh, How much is this? Yeah. Ooh, uh, well, teleportation wow. alone is a thousand gold per teleportation, so there's two grand. Ooh. The scrying is going to cost roughly 500, so it's 2,500 gold. And then, uh, to, to be honest, I expect this item to cost at least double or triple that amount of money. So Oof. ten thousand or more. Oh, this is... oh Jesus! Yeah, this this a, a regular a regular one is like ten. Or it's like one grand. So it's like yeah, I think we're in too deep. Yeah, I think we just need a regular. I didn't know a regular one was. We this is their yeah. venom. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like this was Cervenum, we, not we, a weed. We can we can group uh you can pull us out of the group stash, right? We have a don't we have a bank, I imagine? Uh right. yeah. <laughs> so so he says is the bank gone? If we 
if if we uh, enchant uh, a spyglass for you, it's a thousand dollars, a thousand gold for the spyglass. It's another thousand for the enchantment. And what the enchantment would be in this instance is a guidance roll, but only for visual perception checks. So you get an extra D4 roll on top of whatever you roll for perception with it. Okay. But what about uh, some, like uh, the super powerful 10,000 gold one? What would that do? That's going to give you advantage. Oh. So are we I rolling this was a thing. advantage what on spy glasses? Gold? Hell... Sorry, say let's, that again. Uh, let's, go with, let's go with just the, uh, the guidance one. Okay. So that'll be 2,000 so gold. They can I, hand that off in three days. is already so high. I don't think I need advantage. All right. Perception. Like yeah, our perception. Off. I already have a plus twelve to perception. Yeah, I have a plus nine. Well, then you Ooh, need to be navigating. All right. Uh, if you want to remove that gold, you may do so. Otherwise, is there anything else anyone would like to do? Two thousand, he said. Yeah. So that'd be what two hundred platinum. Yep. Mm hmm. Expensive ass spyglass. Not an ass spyglass. You you better see everything with that thing. Oh no, Eyeball you guys are massive. so poor. You've got <laughs> three hundred platinum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so poor. <laughs> this is what it's like to have this money. group. This group is dripping in fucking gear. At this you point. Are. Um, okay. What else would you like to do? I think... I feel good. Yeah, I think we're ready for... to open the casino. Alright. Let's open the casino then. Um, once again, reopening night comes. You are roughly half an hour into the evening so far, and you've greeted many guests, um, some of who you sort of recognize just their faces, not necessarily folks you've spoken to. Morty is running things as folk need. He's actually off the hooch, and he has come to report to you that so far, things are going incredibly well. You can hear Kikos, the dragonborn bard, playing the piano merrily, Commander Kant and his... Uh, his um, Men have been making the rounds. Uh, Captain Anders is technically his former superior, but now that Commander Kant is working for you directly, he is in charge of security. And frankly, he's running a good chi uh, ship. Corporal Chud's out front. He sort of comes in, salutes. Nobody else seems to be entering. It was quite a steady, steady stream in for that first half hour. But at this moment, it is quiet, and Morty says, all is well. Nice. Has uh, Lord as it should be. Has the Lord uh, never ember? He uh, he shut up, Morty. Oh no, he's not. He uh, nothing from Lord Never Ember or his uh, his man Barak Klinghammer. Hmm. Odd dwarf that one. Yeah, it's odd indeed. Yeah, we were hoping. Not like uh, you though, Mort. Yeah. Man, I'd kill yeah, for an ale. You want one? Oh Rico no no! Out, Rico pulls out wine cup. <laughs> He's kind of like, no no no! I'm I'm working. I'm working, lads. Do yourself. Uh, if I see any of these folk, I'll uh, let you know. And he sort of gives a nod and goes back towards the tables. Um, as you're standing there, Corporal Chud goes, halt. Hold. And a figure you recognize 
saunters up to the front doors. And Corporal Chud sort of looks him up and down and goes, No weapons? Excellent. You may enter. And in walks Ayuz, the son of Natasha and Remoros. And he sees you all with a shit-eating grin on his face. One tiefling horn straight up, the other sort of askew and asunder out to the side, his long ears poking out from under his dashing purple hair, his clothes immaculate, perfect. He is the essence of beauty in a soft way, if you will. So, in some sense, he puts a bard to shame. Imagine, uh, you know, Riku's sword hilt, because it doesn't really have a blade on it when it's uh, not out. Imagine it's like a gun and he has it holstered. He now uh, pulls his, his jacket back and it reveals the, <laughs> the hilt of the sword like it's a gun. <laughs> like when, he's, when uh, he steps forward. <laughs> Ayuz says, <laughs> Evening, roosters, evening. Haven't come to tickle any cocks. Just here to Whoa. spend some gold. And you can see that he has this, what looks to be empty pouch on his hip that he's like slowly holding up to you as he pulls it off his hip. He goes, promise, no tricks. I'm here to apologize for mother's instructions. And he begins to turn the pouch upside down and an entire platinum bar falls out worth 500 platinum. Oh. Hmm. See? Riku, Riku looks him up and down. Uh, does he seem sincere? Make an insight check. Son of a bitch. Dang. So you uh, don't know what I'm rolling. I was going to roll, do my session inspiration on this guy right here, on this one. Go, go ahead. But, um, before you. Oh, wait, okay. Oh. It's not meant to be. <laughs> sure. Uh, Vincent, what were you going to well, say? Either way, sir. I was going to. He's going to keep his eye on this guy throughout the night. Okay. I was just going to look to see if I had, um, if I was going to give him a pat on the back before he. R Riku says, is that oh, for no. us or are you planning yeah. on spending that here? Which, which, uh, what are you getting at here, bud? Oh, I plan on spending this here. And, oh, you know how casinos are. You just lose a lot of money. Uh, Riku's going to say, you don't have any soul coins, do you? <laughs> Uh, I may have one or two on me, but nothing of the ilk that we experienced last time. Uh, I, I promise it wasn't me. Well, we're going to have to take those off you and any other uh, contraband you might have. You have to be subjected to a search. I hope you don't mind. But this is due to uh, <laughs> what happened last time. Fine, fine. Whatever you wish. And he sort of walks forward, platinum bar in hand, his gold, his empty, what appears to be an empty gold bag in the other hand. R Riku takes way. the platinum bar and just hands it to Axel, and then, uh, and then looks at the other two and it's like, hey, "There you go, see what he's got." Yeah, let's make sure this thing is real. Is this is this real? <laughs> uh, yeah, make an investigation check on that, Axel, Vincent, and Sir Venom. If you guys are checking, I use. Please go ahead and roll an investigation check on him, or one of you roll with advantage. Um. Yeah, you can... uh, what's your investigation? It's uh. uh... No, I am terrible, so you go. I'll help you. Oh, not 20. Yeah, you, find, you find three soul coins on him. One of them in particular feels lighter than the others. And as you look at it, you can see that the eyes, the skull-like eyes on the soul coin, on the one that feels lighter, have a sort of dullness to them where there is a brightness in the eyes of the other two soul coins. Um, you believe that two of them have souls within and one is empty. And he goes, told you, I had some coins on me, but uh, I trust, trust me when I say they're not the same as the others that we experienced the other night. Um, that is real. And, and Axel, as you look at the platinum bar, you see uh, that it is marked with the mark of, oh gosh, what country is that again? It is marked with the mark of Amon, A-M-N. And uh, you recognize it to definitely be real. Amon is a country of merchants and traders, some of an arcanic nature. Uh, and you, you definitely believe that this is a real bar of platinum, 500 platinum. 
Okay. And was it... Uh, who was the lady that sent... Was it his mom or something? That sent yeah, him? Natasha. Was she the lady that invaded our dreams? Yes. Oof. Uh... Riku, Riku's going to take the uh, the soul coins and say, we're holding on to these. And if nothing happens, we'll give them back before you leave. And then he, he like, kind of nods to Axel to, like, hand him back the platinum. All right. He says, <laughs> you best be spending that here for what happened last time. And he kind of looks at you. Uh, make, make either persuasion or intimidation checks. Uh, we're going to persuade him. The 26. Okay. And he sort of sighs and he says, I'll just consider it the cost of doing business. Uh, I simply wish to enjoy my evening and extend my apologies as asked by my mother. Consider it um, gracious for us to not just kick your ass and take everything from you for what happened <laughs> last time. How about that? Let's start there. And he sort of rocks back on his heels and he goes, oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, I I'm not here for violence. Simply here to apologize in game. Nothing more. Well, let's let's see uh let's see you prove it, bud. And he kinda points and he goes, May I? You may. And be weary. And then uh Riku signals to like one of the uh, guards to like follow him. <laughs> okay. And as you do so, uh Lieutenant Shift comes around and he's gonna shiftily follow I use everywhere. Before before the night started, I would have used the the telepathic bond spell for you know, eight people. So the four of us. I think we handled that pretty guard, well. And Morty. Yeah, Morty and uh, I guess two other two other guards. So you'd probably want Captain Anders, Commander Kant, Morty, yourselves, and who? Maybe um, Calic Sigletockle, who runs the all the dealers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we can stay in touch telepathically. Uh, done. You are in touch telepath telepathically with Morty, Captain Anders, uh, Calic Sigletockle, and Commander Kant. Excellent. And then every every hour, I'd like you know recast it. Gotcha. And spend the ten um, minutes to recast it. Uh, Kalex Sigletoggle is able to give you a status update on earnings every 15 to 20 minutes, if you so require. Commander Kant and Captain Anders give different reports, one for each floor, and Morty gives you a uh, till tally in regards to alcohol and food, those sorts of things. Um, the general take so far is that the house is up roughly 453 gold. Bad. Hmm. Hope no uh, funny business occurs again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd also I'd uh I'd make sure to to keep myself where I can like use my crazy passive perception to keep an eye on Iuz. Just keep them there within sight at all times while I'm like you know checking out the floor and keeping an eye on things. Gotcha. Um, if you want, go ahead and give a perception check, and we'll just have that as your active sort of perception check for this. Oh, I can't. I can't use my passive. Uh, what's your passive? Uh, twenty-two. Uh, I want to say that this has to be more of an active thing. I think you're like wa you're kind of watching him. Passive is going to be a little less uh, less than you'd probably want. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Um, he doesn't appear to be hiding anything. So far as you can tell, he's on the up and up and cleanly playing his cards. He's winning some hands. He's losing the majority of hands. And he's betting higher than most of the other folks around him, who he's actually seeming to make fast friends with because he has a lot of money that he's very willing to spend into the pool. I still don't trust him. Keep my eye on him. Gotcha. Uh, what's everyone else doing? Hmm. I think I might put uh I might put the monkey to work. Okay. Uh yeah. I cause I can desense them. Ooh. 
I forgot about the monkey. Where I can like it's so long. Yeah, I can like uh be sent. Um You can see the monkey pull out a little dagger, spin it in his hand, and then sheath it again and salute Axel. Uh so I can see through. I think I'm like I have this spell called Descent, where I can see through a, like an animal's eyes or something. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'll do that for an hour because it says I can concentration for up to an hour. Gotcha. So, you know, maybe I'll go put Axel in a room somewhere and then just walk around as the monkey. He goes and sits on the shitter. Kind of like, um, you know, <laughs> make people feel like, you know. I'm just a silly monkey. You can don't gotta worry about me. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Here, let's let's put you. Um, I'm actually gonna drop you. I think it would make sense to put you within the library here, because it is technically closed off to the public, and Commander Khan's sort of a bit of a blocker. And uh, you do so, and let me find Piccolo. And drop Piccolo in here. Yeah. I think, I think I might use him to distract people. Like I know you're thinking, oh, just have him like pickpocket, but I don't know if I want to pickpocket our own customers like that. Uh, but maybe like this oh, he's, guy. He's a great monkey though to have running around. Like, yeah. Uh, How do I want like to test him? Hyped up. The thing is, would I be rolling if I rolled uh, stuff? Would I be rolling for his stats or mine? You would be rolling with his stats, but there are certain things that with your training. Yeah. He will get a D4 boost on. Okay. So like rogue-ish type things in particular, he's going to get a D4 boost on. Is there anywhere where I could see his um like stat sheet like uh, I don't know. Um yeah, let me Like find... uh, for just monkey cuz I know I've seen the monkey or whatever and they got like one like like no HP and and if he gets caught, he's just like, "Oh, I can't help it. I'm just a monkey, you know." Wait. Yeah, I'm just a monkey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just a little monkey. Yeah. Um, Do we have any entertainment for this? Uh, is there any t- entertainment going on? Yeah, you've got okay. um the yeah exactly. Okay. Sorry, I'm finding the baboon because it's technically a baboon that. All right. Yeah. So those are the stats for Piccolo. Um, he does technically get a d4 though on like any sort of sleight of hand any sort of stealth any sort of um like that type of stuff so his dex is so it's plus two and his proficiency the proficiency bonus is two and and he's got a dagger as a weapon and that does 1d4 plus two well he's not gonna be stabbing anybody (laughs) 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 all right um so who, who do I want to check out? Uh, who looks like a doofus? This old man. Uh, let's see. Uh, which old man? The one next ah, to yes. the zombie-looking guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's slowly playing his cards, uh, like very slowly. Yeah. I might, ah, oh, jeez, do I want to, you know, does he, so does he seem like he has a lot, does he seem like he's got money? Uh, as Piccolo is walking by, um, roll a perception check, actually. Let's see. Uh, what can make out. Who, uh, so with the baboon stats, Piccolo. I think it's an 11 for passive, wisdom is plus one. So I just roll a 20, and then, yeah, okay. Twenty. Yeah, eighteen. Which okay. That's pretty damn good. Okay. Um. So plus one, nineteen. Uh. You can tell that he's playing with mostly copper and silvers, and as he's looking at his cards, he slowly pushes forward two silver and three copper, and he goes, "I raise." Oh fuck this guy. Uh, I get. We gotta go for money bags over here. <laughs> I was gonna. Yes. I didn't know why I do it, but yes, yeah. Okay, and as Piccolo continues to run around, um, let's make a passive stealth check with Piccolo. Okay, passive stealth. I mean, my stealth is 
pretty good and I'm an expert at it, so I feel like I would have passed on some of that knowledge to him, you know? Yeah, yeah, he would get a D4 for this. <laughs> he bestowed the stealth skills <laughs> on the monkey. Yeah. So that's going to be a 10, because he's got a plus 2 to his dexterity. So go ahead and uh, add a D4. Okay. Roll a 4. Okay. Close enough. Okay, so he's got a 12. Um, let me just check something. <laughs> I'm just a monkey. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, okay. And... Uh, yeah, so everyone's playing cards. What would you like to do? Ooh. Hmm. So he's got, like, does he have, like, a big jacket on or something? Or, like, a, what, do we... Uh, Ayuz is wearing what appears to be a um, jacket that goes down uh, to his hips. Um, he's wearing really fine clothing. It, it doesn't appear woolen in any sense. It, it's entirely satin, um, fine sort of cottons. Um, it's a beautiful jacket. It's like a sort of a puffy pair of trousers, leather boots that are incredibly well-crafted with different um, embroidery on them. Hmm. If I fuck this up, is he just going to storm out and leave and take his platinum with him, though? Hmm. Oh. I think, okay... Um. So, what game are they playing? Like, is it like poker? Yeah, it's three dragon ante. Yep. All right. Uh, if he's in the middle of like a big hand, like if there's a part where he's in the middle of a big hand, I want to like distract him. Okay. And just like uh... you know, try to like tug on his jacket, kind of like monkeying around, distract make him, him from make him lose yeah. focus. Make a wisdom check as Axel. Okay. Because you're watching for a big hand right here. Yeah. So wis straight wisdom. Yeah, it could be it could be um if you think there's a skill that maybe an insight check, for example. Uh insight. But yeah, wisdom I do, otherwise. I can do insight. So seventeen. That's pretty good. Um it comes around and you're able to see some of the cards the way that they're gonna be beginning to fall in the river of the three dragon anti hand. As you do so, you can tell that at a glance, you think he's got at least uh, a dragon, if not a dragon and a beholder, which would be quite good for his hand based on what's fallen so far. Um, what would you like to do with Piccolo? So he's got a good hand. He does. It takes you about 15, 20 minutes for this to come up. <clears throat> ah, shit. Um... Uh, yeah, so, fuck. Uh, we'll just start, we'll jump on his back and, uh, mess with his hair. Okay. <laughs> um, roll a... We're griefing him. Yeah, 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 no, um, uh, what do you, Looking what do you around. think? I assume it's gonna be like a charisma check or something. Yeah. You I can guess, make it a different check if you think of something. I that guess like fits. a performance. It would be him like performing because he's like, you know, or yeah. Part of the act. Yeah. I, I'd even allow an acrobatics. If like I understand the performance take, but he has to climb up him. Oh and right. Then, like ruffle his hair, right? Yeah, it works. So if you... Cause I'm assuming that's a good check for him anyway, because mm, he's a monkey. Definitely. He's got plus two to it. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just rolling d20. And ooh. Okay. So then I get to four. D4? Yep. Yeah, you get the D4 on this one. Okay, so... It's a 12, is that right? Yeah. Climbing a, climbing a T-fling ain't that hard. Okay, so he doesn't have any problem cl grabbing onto the, the sort of ruffled pants that I use is wearing, grabbing onto the jacket, and launching himself up onto the head of I use, who sort of begins to fall forward onto the table like, what in the world? Um, and as he does so, he, he kind of overshoots the top of his head and he has to grab onto one of the horns to like swing himself back up onto Ayuz's head and then the monkey begins to sort of like beat on Ayuz's head like a like a bongo effectively and Ayuz is like what is this monkey doing <laughs> and you can see that he like gen like very gently actually sort of picks him up and he's like looking at Piccolo and he's like 
uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, here, cash me out for this hand. And he sort of lays his cards down and puts all of his money into the pot, actually, which is to say he's giving up all of the coin that he had left. And he begins to carry the monkey. He goes, uh, apologies, I, I must... Uh, I must uh, step aside for a moment. And he begins to leave. And you can see that, uh, I don't know where the rest of you guys are, but I'm assuming that you're not looking over this way. He steps into the bathroom with Piccolo. What? Oh, oh no. What's he, what's he what's doing with that monkey? What are you going to do with the monkey? And <laughs> as he does so, you can see I use hold the monkey up to his face. And he goes, my, 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 little friend. What have we here? Oh, enough of these games. I'm done with this. And he begins to cast a spell, and as he does so, he and Piccolo plane shift. No! Well, that's cool if we can do that. <laughs> well, I'm, ch I'm checking plane shift, and you I'm checking the monkey. No, what? No! <laughs> that, is, that was unexpected. Sinister. Does can he do that with the, uh, the has... hollow spell up? Uh, that's a very good question. Let's double check. I thought he was going to flush him. I thought he was going to do worse. Oh, come on. Uh, so theoretically, Beast Sense lasts. Uh, it was up for half an hour. Plane shift. You can test my target. Let me double check the Hallow spell. There's a lot of spells that I kind of like sort of cross-reference for this. Uh, let's see. Oh, high-level D&D. This is cool. What happens when we try to kidnap a monkey? Yeah, I was just monkeying around. Um, yeah, he can do that with the Hallow, uh, Hallow spell up. Oh, no. Pickle! And uh, you still have B sense. You can see where he now is. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Uh, let me see if I have a map for this. This is unexpected. So. <laughs> yeah, <that> was... <laughs> yeah. Okay. He turned into like it's like we chipped him with a monkey. Wow. Good. Right. Good plan. Uh... Yeah. I knew this was all gonna happen. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so does, does that mean if he if he is somewhere that has a teleportation circle, would Axel be able to like see that through the monkey's eyes and then draw us? Well, let like, me let me give you what it, it and then like. we can teleport there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you this. I'll give you what it looks stretch, like. My friend. Um, it is an odd place. It's the middle of a forest. It is appears to sort of be twilight. And as he teleports, or plane shifts, excuse me, he places Piccolo down onto a stump in this forest, in this sort of like small, about 15 foot clearing that's very mossy. And there's just this one stump in the center. And he goes, well, what do you think of your new home here, little friend? Feywild's nice, isn't it? Looks quite pretty here. Well, look, I, I must get back to the party. I um. It was so good to uh, have you ruin that hand. I mean, I don't care about the coin and all, but, you know, don't care for you to spy on me too much anyways. And he sort of pats the monkey, just sort of like, pat, pat, on the top of its head. And then goes, well, I must be off. And you can see him plane shift again. Uh, huh. Piccolo is looking around the forest clearing. You can move about as you so wish. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, he just looks for a nice tree to climb, I guess. Okay. And, uh, hangs out. And, uh, acts oh. once, yeah. I mean, there's not much I can do, right? It's just kind of... Uh, you've got about 20 minutes still left of B-Sense, so if there's something you think you could try to do, I would say go for it, but... Uh... I mean, do I, what am I, Faye, why, is that like a forest or something? What is, what is it? It's like a... Uh, roll, roll a, either an Arcana or History check as Axel. Ooh, five. Five. I mean, you've only heard of the Feywild as the land of fairy, the place where 
centaurs and satyrs and sort of elven creatures are from, but you don't know much more than that. Okay. Um. Yeah, fuck it. Actually, snap. I'm going back to Axel. I'm snapping him. <laughs> I'm looking through the monkey. I'm walking over to this guy. Uh, yeah. I'm going. Oh, okay, so you want to walk over to? Yeah, yeah Axel's. Axel's. Uh, <laughs> Axel, where's this guy? <laughs> okay. Uh, and, okay, so you walk up. You walk up, and you can sort of see Lieutenant Schiff sort of like pacing here, just waiting outside the bathroom, because he went into the bathroom right here. Like, hey, was the monkey? You see a monkey in there? Yeah, I'm gonna wait for him to get out of the bathroom. And Lieutenant Schiff kind of nods at you and says, sir. Yeah. And uh, you wait for a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Lieutenant Schiff kind of like glances at you, glances at the door. Should I knock, sir? Uh, uh, I'm sure he'll be back. I mean, this, I think he's, yeah, he'll be, he'll be back. I mean, I did hear him say he's going to go back to the party, right? And this was the party. So. You did. You did hear him say he was going to return to the party. Yeah, give him a couple more minutes. Uh... Okay, <clears throat> three more minutes, four, five more minutes goes by. You hear no noises. Yeah, knock. Give it a knock there, Schiff. Uh, as you wish, sir. He goes up and he knocks on the door. No response. Uh, everything okay in there, sir? No response. Huh. Uh, here, let me, and he begins to fiddle with the door, and it just opens. It wasn't even locked, and the room is empty. All right, all right. Uh, all right, I guess he ain't coming back. <laughs> Did he, at least, um, flush? Yeah, well, flush, but so he had that platinum bar. I mean, did he exchange it for chips? What, uh, what um, happened there? Uh, at that moment in time, you actually get a report over the um, telepathic bond that you've set up. Um, sir, we're we're suddenly over by 500 platinum. Uh, it looks like one of the patrons left all his coin on the table and uh, has technically forfeited the hand. Oh, all right, mission accomplished, I guess. Piccolo, uh, I salute you. <laughs> Dang, that's cold, bro. Um, I will say, at this, you do get... Uh, let me just find an image of what this looks like. Uh, you do get a bit of a sight from Piccolo, and you can see that he's following noise through the forest. And as he does so, uh, he comes upon what appears to be a the outskirts of some sort of large uh, tent. Um, and this tent, uh, it's pretty fantastical. He's He climbed a tree to be able to sort of see on some level, right? Uh, as you sort of directed him to do. And what you can see off in the distance is this sort of enormous looking carnival tent and this tent has light emanating from it and there's people moving about and uh here i'm just gonna see if i can bring this over to owlbear to show you what this looks like i'm just gonna make this large for a moment this is what piccolo sees this beautiful sort of carnival and he begins to walk up towards it and that's when beast sense leaves you hmm. uh, and it sort of I, blinks out. I think he's in a better place. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we'll talk about it after the thing here. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it sounds like we're doing pretty good. Um, Vincent and Riku, just as a bunch of this is happening, you can hear Corporal Chud. Uh, oh, uh, good evening, Lord Clanghammer. Please, right this way. And you can see him stepping aside and ushering in none other than Barak Clanghammer, who sees the two of you and says, Ah, heroes of Waterdeep back in Neverwinter. 
Good to see you here. Good to see you here. I hear that you've taken on the uh, task of the Order of the Gauntlet, and you're set to set sail in several days. He goes, aye, aye, mateys, and he says to you with a sort of mischievous grin. Uh, uh, your uh, word yeah. spreads quickly. Apparently. And he sort of he shrugs and goes, Mert the Blackstaff, myself, Lords of Silvery Moon, we, we talk constantly. Of course. Well, I hope you're here to enjoy yourself. Oh, uh, in, indeed. Indeed I am. Um, uh, I believe there was one thing I wanted to check in upon uh, with you in particular. And um, uh, what was that? Uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, your ranger's uh, cabin, Vincent. Uh, the outpost should be ready in several days. Um, all the permits have been successfully filed. Quite the tall building that you're going to have, by the sound of it. Um, there's one more thing. Uh, oh, yes. And he takes out a scroll. And he goes, ah, yes. Uh, the last that the Order of the Gauntlet had heard, the base of operations of the Dancing Devils is located in the Corin Archipelago, uh, which is a known haven of pirates, Northlander communities, and outcasts from the Sword Coast. Yes. Well, Thanks, Charles. Uh, that's all the information that they have. They have no idea where within the Corin Archipelago this is located. They have no idea how many folks there are there, how many communities there may be, and how many outcasts there have been. Uh, I apologize for the limited information, but my understanding is that the Corin Archipelago is where you're being tasked with uh, heading towards. Dangerous business. It'll be just another day for us, Riku smiles. And he sort of smiles serenely back to you. Indeed. Well, um, I might go play a hand of three dragon ante, and you, you see him like rubbing his hands together. Uh, unless there's anything else uh, we need to discuss, gentlemen? Uh, no, I think that'll be all. Oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, good evening to you, then. Show yourself, Lord Never Amber. I'm sorry, I mean... Oh. That... <laughs> Barak. Uh, make a deception check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 13 and he sort of laughs and goes oh, please 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 I'm not Lord Dever I'm not please no uh, you think you were successful in, in, in sort of the way that you played it off you think wonderful he continues on into the next room actually he's going to go upstairs to gamble Nice. He'll go up the stairs. The VIP section. He wants to hit the craps tables. Uh, is there anything else you would like to do as the roosters here within shenanigans? <clears throat> um, I think so. As long as everything else goes smoothly at the... Uh... Reopening. Yeah, uh, the rest of the evening goes quite smoothly. Um, there is one or two patrons who comes away with over a hundred gold. However, at the end of the night, uh, you are up uh, nearly four hundred. Or sorry, you are up nearly five hundred and eighty-four platinum. So you're up quite oh a bit. All the people. All the people who go away with uh, large amounts of winnings, Riku's going to offer them free stays um, for, for when they come back. Oh, okay. Uh, one of them says, oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, I, I'd love to come back and gamble some more. Excellent. We'd love to have you. Indeed, indeed. I, I'm going to bring some friends next time. Of course. You sh and, uh, and tell more friends. Spread the word. Oh. We're always open. Always welcome we'll, to have more. Will do, will do. And you can see that they're heading off into the night. There's many people very happy, a few people quite glum. But shenanigans begins to wind down for the evening. Is the 584, is that after we've paid everyone and, uh, you know, we're taxed? Or is that, like, all pro all us? Uh, that's all you. So, all or, right. or, sorry, that's, like, after tax and everything. Okay. So, 
you're good to split that up however you wish. So I think everybody add 100 platinum, and then we throw the rest into, like, the community uh, platinum. Okay. Community, community chest. chest. Yeah. Under 100 platinum? Yeah, add 100. It's just raining money. <laughs> Let's have another opening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's do this again. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, we should be. I mean, it's a business. It should be running all the time now. Hundred. Okay, and then one. Just as a reminder, you're not going to typically have nights where somebody walks in with five hundred platinum. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's okay. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. As an apology. I feel like we were restrained when it came to that guy. I was ready to just take his bar and throw him out like Uncle Phil. Exactly, and uh, Exactly like yeah. what I said. You know, that's, that was my first reaction, too. Hey, thanks. Later. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to figure out how to get that damn monkey back. Uh, I would, who's, uh... Yeah, I don't know if you told anybody about Yeah, that. who's who's good at, like, spell, like, um... I mean, Arcana, teleport several like, times. Yeah, who's good at spells and stuff? I would tell that person that, hey, do we know how to like get somebody back if they've been plane shift or they've been like taken to another dimension? Oh, not yet. Soon though. Okay. Give it time. We yeah, I mean, on the back. I it it might be he goes there. Uh, he maybe he learns some new skills and then then maybe we'll get him back. Like might, Jumanji. We might have to ask our friend again. We'd have a better luck doing that. Asking, yeah, he uh, went to, to, there to begin with. He's like, it's like he's in Jumanji, and he's just gonna like, you know, whole new personality. He'll be back. Okay. Maybe Did... uh, Vincent will wish it. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> 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 that would be quite the wish. Yeah. Vincent's I like have no birthday. emotional attachment to that monkey. Damn. I think he liked you. Probably, but... He liked me more, Riku says. <laughs> so, hey, what would you like to do next? Well, hot uh, dang. Casino's back up and running, boys. And the... The ship. We... It's all taken care of for as far as like supplies are concerned and stuff like that. It is. Uh, it will be uh, in four more days for you. Yep. Okay. Then is there anything, you know, the group? Just before we, we go, you know, is there anything else we want to get before we go? Last minute shopping. Um, I think we're good. All right. Um, if you wait the requisite two days in Neverwinter, that means that you've got two more days until you got to be back in Waterdeep. You'll get the Spyglass without any issues. So the Spyglass is yours, Sir Venom. Everything real quick while I walk by the baby's room so I don't wake her up. <laughs> All good. Um, but the Spyglass is yours, uh, as you wish. Um, if there's anything else anyone would like to do, Give a shout. If not, I turn it over to Riku to teleport you away. Riku. Teleports. You gonna do it? All right. Uh, you would like to teleport to the Bard's College, is that right? That's right. All yeah. right. And as you do so. Um, fifth level spell gone. Oh, he'll be back. <laughs> uh, you find yourselves once more within Songhaven Academy in the teleportation zone. Says, all right, cheese it, boys. Looks through window and uh, Misty steps outside. <laughs> and I assume you Misty step outside of the actual grounds. Yeah. Okay. Done. Um, what are the others doing? Are we on the first floor? 
you are. And these yeah. these windows open? Or are they like? Stained? No, those are stained. They're like stained glass, and Riku's right. like barely able to see through one of the clear portions of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so we're even... we're like heroes of this city, right? Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Sir Venom. Perfect. And you are heroes of uh, the city. That's right. Yeah, I'm just walking out the front door. If I'm strutting. All right. Uh, Sir Venom and Vincent, do you follow Axel? Uh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know what we're doing. We're just like, <laughs> yeah, we're going All to right. our we're going to our boat, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be excited too. So, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll have a little little pep to my step. All right. Let's uh, every single one of you oh, please yeah. roll. I've got my, <laughs> got my iPod. I thought, I thought you. I really thought you were going to say uh, initiative. (laughs) No, go ahead and roll performance check. Let's see uh, how convincing you are. Performance. I don't have perf. Oh, yeah, I do. Minus one. You don't have it. Well, he's he's got something, all right. Um, Let me roll a few things. Let's see. Vincent would then, I guess, be like, um, like, uh, Will Farrell and what's his name? And, uh, who are those guys? Vincent is now Will Farrell. What? <laughs> what movie? Yeah, well, what I know. Movie? What movie am I talking about? Were they the. Dun, 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 are they John Head C. Bob? Riley? No. Were they Head Bob? Oh, Night of the Roxbury. Oh, the Rock okay. Bear. Okay. That, the was not, that was not what I. Yeah, that's uh... not what I was expecting at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, so funny <laughs> enough, you do notice you you go by a few folk, and one of them goes, "Wait a second, wasn't that?" And he like turns to like try to talk to somebody, and there's nobody else there. Um, it's like this guy down here, and he's like, "I thought that was the heroes of the city." Uh, um, maybe not. That, oh, that was weird. Though. There they go out the front gate. Sort of shrugs and like walks away. Um, you get through without issue. You pass yeah. out of the Bard's College. And you can go wherever you would like within the city of Neverwinter or city of Waterdeep, and so I'll pull that up. Is anyone else going like full pirate cosplay, or is it just Sir Venom? Just Sir Venom. Yeah, I mean, you guys are nerds. Axel already has he's already missing an eye. He just lost his monkey yeah. when you're strutting around with a parrot. So have some courtesy. <laughs> You want to borrow my parrot? Will that make you feel more complete? Are you, are you talking to Axel? Yeah. Axel, like what Vincent is saying is not what Axel's thinking. <laughs> Axel's thinking he already looks like a badass who doesn't need like some costume to make people think he is. He's like, yeah. He always looks like he's ready to fuck shit up. That was a no to the borrowing of a parrot. (laughs) Fine, I'll I'll keep my parrot. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, as you head towards the docks and you make your way through the streets, you first go down Waterdeep Way, and as you do so, you sort of gain like a glance or two here or there. And as you turn onto uh, Snail Street, you begin to realize... Children are following you, pointing, t- talking. There's one or two f- adults stopping and staring at you as you go Vin- by. <coughs> one person begins to clap. Yeah. People are taking notice of you in as, as this is an incredibly positive uh, fashion. Riku begins changing his outfits because he's got his glamour armor, whatever the glamour studded. And uh, he tries to blend into the crowd every so often and uh, also chant. The group as they proceed forth. <laughs> uh, make a performance check. Vincent would sign an autograph to a kid. A couple kids yeah. would be walking. And then by. one of them you realize is Riku. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. I mean, you you chant at one point. You start a chant of roosters, roosters, <laughs> and like a bunch of people take it up. Nice. Uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna start playing my pan flute as we walk. Give us a little theme music. Uh, make a performance check for that.
Not bad, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you keep a uh, bit of a beat to your march down Snail Street, and you turn onto Fish Street, making your way to the docks. And as you do so, you round the bend, and you see before you a large galleon with none other than a young man and a hippogriff standing next to each other. It's Hansel, your brother, Riku. And he goes, I am to be your envoy for the Order of the Gauntlet, here upon the Grand Mirror. And he points to the ship in front of you. The ship at your disposal here in front of you is quite large. Hey, wait, wait, Riku says, you're coming with us? Whoa. Oh, in indeed. Uh, were you not informed of this? No. <laughs> this is great news. Riku goes up and, and hugs him. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm glad that you are so excited, brother. Uh, um, here, let me show you around the ship. And uh, he and the, the griffin sort of takes off and is just sort of circling overhead. And he shows you onto the ship. And it doesn't have the crew as of yet, but you can explore the ship at will. And he says, he explains to you, you see, the the order itself is currently on business, um, looking for that that artifact, I believe, that you know of, and um, well, uh, they asked me as a squire in training to join the order, to help you and to be your liaison to the order while you're uh, venturing forth. Excellent. I feel safer already. Riku uh, puts his hand on his shoulder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, uh. Considering how I've seen that you fight, I don't think I'm going to be as helpful, but uh, happy to be here nonetheless, and it's on important order business, and hopefully they'll help me someday. I'm sure, I'm sure they shall. Thank you, uh, and smile. Um, he begins to show you around the ship. You can explore it <laughs> at will. Um, there are several quarters within the Stern Castle in particular that I suspect will tickle your fancies, as well as... Uh, a space um, up in the fore castle. So you could either share a room up front or you could try to sort of like divvy up rooms, um, some sort of rooms between uh, rooms three and four in particular. Room five is taken within the stern castle. That is the captain's rooms. And you can see on the door itself as you come up to the room, it has the name Captain, Captain Davison Jonesboro. I, I kind of like the idea of uh, us all bunking together <laughs> and then giving uh, the, this other space to, like, the other officers, like the captain, like the people who aren't part of a group. I can't mind that. Does that work for folks? Uh, yeah. Bruce just stay together. And Hansel says, well, I understand that. Uh, I suspect that I'm going to have a hammock here on board up top because, you know, and he sort of paths uh, the hippogriff, which has now landed on the deck here next to him. Earth uh, doesn't take well to being confined. I don't imagine so. Uh, anyways, um, you know, uh, shall I go get your captain and crew? Sure. Yeah, Indeed. let's meet them. Uh, Oh, let me grab the captain first and foremost. And he comes back a few minutes later with an individual. Uh, let me see. How many uh, how many levels are we working with on this bad boy? Uh, by levels, you mean like uh, floors? Yeah. Uh, there are technically. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So you've got the the top of the deck here is like one, and then the fore castle and aft ca stern castle are two. Um, the gun deck is three, orlop deck is four, and then the hold is the fifth. Yeah, thirty. So is, thirty looks dangerous. This uh, this is like the top, and these are like below. These yeah. upper areas, right? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. So our rooms are basically just like under this part of the front. Yep. All right. Good to know. Um, easy access to the deck from our rooms. 
Yeah, very much so. You've got that door right there. And the door actually leads out right to, um, almost to the stairs right there that go down to the, um, uh, the gun deck. Cool. I uh, let's see. Captain Davison Jonesboro, where did you go? Whoa. That's quite the, that's quite the name. <laughs> No. Sounds like Sorry. he could have his own brand of cigarettes. <laughs> What's his Davison? Yep. Davison Jones. He seems suspicious. Call Davison him. Jonesboro. Call him Davy. And his last oh, name he, is Jones. He, no, he. Well, that's uh. the thing is that when he introduces himself to you, he hates the name Davy Jones. He demands that you call him <laughs> Davison Jonesboro. Okay. No, I'm I'm calling him just Captain. Let's skip. <laughs> hey, skip. <laughs> isn't, isn't isn't skipper usually like the first mate or like second in command? Uh, I have no idea. Oops. Sorry, it looks like I got to remake a token really fast. I just lost the token here. Skipper, the captain of a captain. shipper boat. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll call him Skipper. Hey, Skip. Toronto's. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So Davis and Jonesboro comes aboard, and as you see him. He is a rough cut looking oh. blue dragonborn. Uh, many different scales and sort of like bone horns coming off of his face in particular. But he's well cut in regards to his physique. Nicely put together armor, an incredible looking cutlass. And he goes, Captain Davison Jonesboro, at your call. How can I do you, mateys? Ah, put her there. Riku puts out his hand to shake. And he grabs your wrist and your arm and gives it a mighty shake, sort of like a big, like, grab and hold. Good to meet uh, you. Good to meet you. Uh, you go by Riku, I, I bet. Doing the predator shake. Love it. Um, Riku's like, that's a mighty fine grip you have there, Captain. Should I call Thank you Skipper? You. Riku smiles. Uh, Captain Davison, if you prefer. You got a Cap. <laughs> uh, gives him a nod. Says this is my uh, this is the rest of the roosters, and uh, you know signals to the lads, and then points to his brother and says, "That's my uh, my brother." Indeed, indeed. Uh, would stand at attention and salute to him. Oh, well, you two have already met. This, we're the ones being introduced. <laughs> and and he goes, "Yes, yes." Uh, Hansel is. Let me know all about you. And he goes, salutes back at you, Sir Venom, and goes, "Oh, my understanding is that the orders of the gauntlet." Or to bring you on board as officers. Uh, do you have rank? Like the jobs we decided? Yeah. Yeah, we'd, uh, we'd tell them what we came up with. And so just to be clear before we go any further, uh, it sounds like... Uh, what did you guys decide? Riku is first mate, Vincent is quartermaster, Axel is man-at-arms, Sir Venom taking Crow's Nest. Yeah, Riku pulls out his sword and uh, turns it on and then, like, takes a knee and puts his sword on his knee and says, my sword is yours. <laughs> and uh, Davison Jonesboro takes off uh, this, like, spyglass and he says, and when I hold over command, my spyglass is yours, son. Excellent. He nods at you. And uh, the rest of you, uh, you look like a sailing man, and he points at you, Vincent. I think I've... You been on the seas before? Oh, yes. Good. Plenty of times. Good, good. Well, if you're going to be my quartermaster, it's good to hear that. Um, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. He glances at you, uh, Axel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like to fight. Anytime someone, <laughs> uh, you know, if there's another ship, I plan to just jump on board and uh, kill them all. And uh, 
Yeah. Just so I can jump the full length of this ship. And I'm always in down for like a battle royale, so I'll just be chucking people off, you know, chucking them overboard. Well, that's what I like to hear, and I've heard the stories of what you did to the Northlander's son. Glad to have you on board on our side. He looks at Hansel, and he goes, and, and this one, the, the strange-looking fellow they call Sir Venom. He says his eyes are as good as they get. Hansel nods, and he goes, better than you'd know. Yeah. Well, I turn to him like, ah, you got the uh, the eyes of an eagle, and I also have uh, no small measure of control over the water. And I, like, go up to the side of the boat. And like point out to a distance, um, about 150 feet out into the harbor, and I just cause like you know 20 foot cube of water to just rise up about 100 feet out of the water, and then slowly lower it back down. I'll be damned, the water weird. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm glad to have you on board. Damn. Yes, he's well suited hey. for the seas. It would seem. Not, I do. Uh, like the, I, I do what the I can. Seas, the grounds, the suitor everywhere. You know, like spread my wings. Like, yeah, I'm also uh, quite adept at uh, aquatic combat. I'm gonna breathe the water just as easily as I can the air, as Cat would say. Damn. Well, this is a hell of a crew that we've got. Uh, I mean, and he begins to bring up the rest of the crew. Um, it's a bit of a motley crew, frankly. He's got a, you know, 20 rough uh, sailors. He goes, he begins just introducing them uh, down the list. And as he does so, he says, uh, Edramir, Erekshi, Willarg, Bori, Thrimania, Winnie, Elwingood, Narder, Sylvia, Finnadar, Ermoth, Sin, Perzim, Pikeman. Wilco Beige, Ethan, Seti, Jurgen Jurgader, Bali, and Lad Yell. And there's a lot of elves, oddly enough. A lot of elves, half elves, one or two halflings. Um, fewer humans than you would expect. There's about three or four humans, and then two half orcs. Um, and so as this crew begins to populate itself across the Grand Mere, the boat that you're all on, it goes, Well, do you. Do you have a, a place that we're headed? You want to set sail tonight, today, tomorrow? What's the thought? Let us have a, uh, a sort of meet and greet tonight. We'll have food and drink before we set sail, sort of get to know each other, and then we set sail tomorrow. How's that, How's that work for everybody? Well, uh, I think it works grand. Uh, works grand. I mean, the lads will always enjoy another day in port, so. I tell them to gather as many women as they can find and as much food and meat as they can carry and bring it aboard. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So when he was uh, introducing his crew, um, did, did, they, did he just lead a, read a list of their names or did we actually get to see them? You, you actually get to see them and I'm not uh, getting to place them. I assume, I assume like, they were like standing around. So I would ask him if he like knows all these guys. He does, actually. Um, they are, and, and actually you'd have known this just from your conversations with the Order of the Gauntlet, um, and uh, Hansel could have re, uh, you know, prepared you for this once again. Um, these guys are actually sailors of Waterdeep itself. Um, they are hired and trained, and they are professional Water Davian sailors paid by the city. And so they are well-trusted. Uh, they're part of the guard, technically, the city guard. All right. Interesting. So like the the uh the city navy almost. Yeah. As long as uh like the coast guard. As long as there's no imposters on board, because I see we're, the, we're, we're we're in the coast guard, boys. Yeah, I see oh, room yeah. thirty, and I'm thinking if someone was able to trick their way on board, it could be bad. Thirty. Oh, all the red barrels. <laughs> yeah. The explosive barrels. Yeah. That's what, yeah. So. Well, yes, you got to store the gunpowder somewhere. Yeah, I didn't realize. Uh, didn't realize ships had guns on them. These guys, gun technology is quite impressive. State uh, of the art. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we have about fourteen cannons. <laughs> yeah. Well. Maybe actually twenty cannons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
cat 20. We got two levels of them. Yep. Yeah, lots of firepower. Nice. And what, what was our head count on the crew? Uh, it's 20 total. And I've got 11 on deck so far. I've got to put nine more up there. Okay. Um, Riku looks pleased. This is a uh, everything's going to plan. We've got a we've got a castle that's generating money, and now we have a crew with, you know, a small army. Yeah, everything's going to plan. <laughs> what could go wrong? Exactly. Uh, so, so you guys want to have like a party tonight? Is that the idea? Yes. Yeah, Riku we'll wants to do. Have a gathering and a like a meet and greet. Riku's you know, gonna get to do know the crew. Riku's gonna do Rico no, stuff. Fine. Okay. Um. Yep. The, uh, I'll the perform crew. To, to try to you know try to uh, I, I'll uh, I'll sing songs to regale our our past triumphs and uh, victories and recent recent events basically, bring the crew up to the date through song and dance, and then we'll share drinks and food. I guess we sure. are kind of like on a stage because the area where the the wheel is is like elevated, so we kind of like can do a speech. Yep. Yeah, whatever you'd like to do. Um, they are willing to. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me check one thing. Actually, I think there's a uh, something a mechanic that I can activate for this. Um, let me double check this. Well, we want to we we want to try to earn the trust of our crew early. You know that's sort of what this yeah. is basically for. Because we know you know we're just we're just random guys that got put in charge. That's the way it kind of looks to them. So we want to try to earn their trust as early as possible. Definitely. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, I'm actually checking a rule here uh, within the Ghosts of Saltmarsh book, which is all about seafaring, and. From my perspective, I think this is going to call for a persuasion check at advantage, and we're going to establish a counter that you'll be able to see that is the crew's morale counter. Whoa. Uh, and we have a bard, so we should have plenty of sea shanties. 24. Uh, so it's successful. Um, I'm going to say the counter started at two, and it's one to nine, uh, nine being the highest, one being the lowest. Um, but you're immediately going to get it to a three tonight with this party. Uh, nice. So folks are happy with this. Um, this is a good thing. And uh, they all toast you, say, oh, I've never had a set of officers kick us off with a quite the celebration uh, and you know you can tell that everybody's quite pleased with uh, what you've done like as we like go around and mingle Riku would like be uh, pulling out his uh, decanter that like generates wine magically and being like oh I have my own uh, my own brand if you'd like a taste and just like hand out glasses along with uh, everyone else's like other drinks so he's like making people like double fist gotcha they all willingly or you know quite happily take the extra. <laughs> Excellent. Getting everyone extra drunk. Yeah, no no issues. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to do uh, for the party? Um, no, I think that was the most important thing. We got a, you know, established a relationship here. Okay. I don't want the crew to hate us too early. Perfect. Well, we gotta get then, the uh, uh, we gotta get the morality meter up before we let them start hating us. Yeah. Because then we have room to go down. Yep. To be assholes. <laughs> and uh, there is one other officer that's like worth mentioning, and it'd be Bosun Tosin, and he is uh, one of the other officers on the ship along with a lot of you, and Captain Davison Jonesboro. So what's he do? Uh, the bosun, I believe I said this in the... Oh, that he's that job. Oh, the bo boatswain provides uh, technical repair issues. Ah, yep. shipwright. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Looks very serious. 
Riku would uh, look at you all and say, this guy's the most imp uh, important person on the boat. Should anything happen, you know, with C, without him, we're, we're all dead. Are you saying this to butter him up, or...? Just the facts. Are you being for real? <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm being for real. Protect him. Oh, I'm like, okay. that's why I'm telling you. If anything happens, protect him. Yeah, I got it. Yes. He is quite certainly an important man, Riku. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we don't want to get stranded, so do we? Look, we're going to be fine. No what is this no stranded way. talk? If the boat breaks, we're fucked. This guy can fix the boat. All right. He's like, he's like, look, magic can't fix everything. Then he winks. <laughs> you got rowboat. The worst case scenario, we could leave for you. Surely this won't go badly at all. We just teleport out. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, would you like to set sail from Waterdeep? So, how long is uh, this journey intended to be? Oh, uh, I mean, if you're going to have... Do you want to have this conversation between uh, yourselves, Captain Davison, Jonesboro, and Hansel? Sure, yeah. The, uh, the important people in the crew. Okay. Um, Captain Davison, Jonesboro sort of says, Well, it'll take at least uh, two ten day to get over to the Corrin Archipelago. From there, finding the Dancing Devils, no idea. We've got enough supplies to last us at least 60 days. Uh, so that'd be 40 days of travel, 20 days of searching, though I fully expect it's going to take us longer than that. We can make it stretch to maybe about 90. Uh, if there's any ability to uh, salvage goods, barter for food and water, then Indefinitely, oh, up to a year. Clean water will be Hopefully, I was going to say, hopefully... Clean water as we need it. Hopefully, we can find some sort of market um, out there, if need be. And then, you know, if we need to be able to get more supplies, it'll be easier if we can find a place to buy them uh, over there and not have to travel far from where we're searching. Ideally, is what Riku would say. I mean, that would be ideal, indeed, indeed. Uh, my reports say that there are plenty of settlements in the area, though Excellent. I suspect a significant number of them may be, end up being hostile, especially if we continue to fly the flag of Waterdeep. Easy target, say, they might think. It's a shame you guys don't have a teleportation circle. I could, I could easily go get supplies and come back if that were the case. Oh, teleportation circle. I mean, no, I, I wish we did, though... My understanding is that those are expensive and, uh, well, frankly, ships are sinkable. True. Not a bad point. Yeah, well, were those even work on a boat? Oh, like they'd ship. work on a boat. Oh, they'd work on the size of the Grand Mere for sure. So here's the thing. If we we're with you guys for a year, there's a chance we could, we could get you a teleportation circle up and running on this boat. I mean, that'd be magnificent if uh, such a thing could occur. It would cost you big, though, Riku smiles. Oh, I mean, might cost the city of Waterdeep big, but maybe not me. He sort of smiles back. Yeah, that's true. Well, depends how good of friends we'd be uh, we become. <laughs> Let's, uh, I don't know, see where the wind takes us. Okay. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's part of the spell, is if I draw the circle every day for a year, it stays. Mm, gotcha. Does that cost a spell slot to do that? Yeah. That's oh, the wow. downside. Every day. I'm pretty sure it costs a spell slot. That's what I would assume. Yeah. I wish it was a ritual spell. Because we'd have we just have to sacrifice one of our how many how many fifth level slots do you have? Two? Yeah. Yeah, same. So we just have to sacrifice one of those each day. Yeah, it says casting the spell in the same location every day for a year. Well, dang. We'll have to get some upgrades in this thing, making it unsinkable. 
My my point was like if we're on this boat for a year anyway, might as well just do that shit. Especially if uh two of us can cast it, we could switch off. Yeah. I just didn't know if we were that's that's like why I was asking how long this uh could take. Like I didn't know if we we're gonna be on it for a year. You've got the boat for up to a year. Well, yeah, we we should save that for our forever boat anyway. Let's yeah. uh, yeah, just buy a boat with a thing already on it. True. Yeah, cause um, we do waiting for a year, uh, like a year, unless we do like a time jump. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's like a long time. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a long term investment if we were gonna. This was a forever boat, but it's not going to be so. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Davis and Jonesboro sort of looks at Hansel and says, "Well, I guess we should set sail and uh, see how we get on." Any complaints? Sounds good to me, Captain. All right, and he begins shouting and ordering the crew to set sail out into the harbor of Waterdeep. Um, takes you, I don't know, a few minutes to begin to move beyond the walls of Waterdeep, but you begin to see the city disappear from sight. And as you do so, another few hours, land itself begins to disappear as you head west into the sunset um, as we're like as we're leaving before we're like out of range of water deep i would have cast some magic and in the clouds above the harbor i would make the cloud say the roosters will return be well water deep go to the roost okay um, you've been told that it's roughly three to four hundred miles to the Corin Archipelago, and you begin to sail off into the sunset with those words written in the sky. Nice. Uh, all right. Who would like to make the I first? Oh, I keep forgetting that I can do that. <laughs> Who wants to make the first navigation check? Um, what would that what be? Is... Would that be like me up in the crow's now? <clears throat> it could be whoever is assisting the captain with navigation. Uh, that's would I be me. able to? Okay. What do you need? Uh, Perception. Yeah, it could be perception, survival, it could be a number of different things, whatever you think is appropriate. All right. Vincent, you assist with for the first day or two, and you begin to show the rest of your friends the ropes of the, the ship. You are an experienced sailor, and it all just sort of comes back and washing over you. The salt and the sea air, the sea and the salty air, the water, the brine. You can see the barnacles on the hull. The way the waves move, your feet sort of taking to the deck once more. Seasickness does not take you, but let's see if it takes the others. Everybody but Vincent, please give me a constitution saving throw. All right. And Sir Venom? Uh, Oof. Uh, so you don't feel amazing, Sir Venom, but you don't end up very ill. Maybe just for a moment, it feels like you have some lunch coming up, but you, you're fine. You sort of okay. shrug it off uh, eventually. Up in, the, up in the crow's nest, there's a little bit of extra sway. <laughs> uh, Axel, you're, you're okay. Um, you felt better, but you don't feel terrible. Riku, it's only up on deck where you feel good. 
and frankly, only where you can get your face over the side of the deck. Because you and the sea are not meant to be, so far as you can tell. You've always heard tales of what it's like on a voyage, but you never knew it felt quite like this. Because you are quite seasick for at least oh, no. the first day. That said, uh, you've got fair seas, fair weather, fair skies, and a nice westward, westerly wind, and it takes you merrily along your way. The crew is in high spirits. You're at the beginning of your voyage, and everything's going well for the first two days. I um, had too much to drink last night. <laughs> uh, Riku, let's get another constitution saving throw from you. But you're going to take a point well, of exhaustion. Would lesser restoration help with the seasickness? Would that, like, seasickness count as, like, poison? Does lesser restoration fix a point of exhaustion? Uh, it does not. Then I'm going to say no in this instance. What do I add exhaustion? Um, Conditions. Believe... Yeah. So you end up getting your feet under you after two days. So on the third day, when you come above deck from your quarters, you feel significantly better. And you don't feel like... You, you feel like you could hold down your food at this point. Um, you do have a point of exhaustion, however, at least for this day. And can I please get a... We're going to do a weather roll. Actually, before we do that, I'd... Uh... I'd walk up, I'd see Riku a little, looking a little green around the gills, mm. and uh, like put my hand on his shoulder. And be like, hey, I see you're struggling a little bit, buddy. Here, maybe, uh, maybe this will help you feel better. And I will cast Greater Restoration. My tummy hurts. Which does remove a point of exhaustion. Oh, well. Thank you. Much All appreciated. Right. Uh, can't uh, can't be doing this all the time now. So uh, you know, get your shit together, Riku. I like the CC doesn't like me. <laughs> can I get so a? Sea legs. Can I get a D8 and a D12, please? Rolled together. Riku's rolling poorly tonight. Someone else. Well, uh, I can roll D8 and D12. Up the mojo. Uh, four and a five. Four and a five. Let's see. Um, it's warm and cloudy. So that's your four. And your five is the same as, is roughly this, you know, it's going to be roughly the same wind as the other days, just like maybe a knot or two slower. Uh, so you do feel yourself slowing down. And with the warmth in particular, you all begin to sort of feel a little drowsy and sort of just sunburned. And that goes on for another day or two. Uh, who would like to do the next rolls? Uh, Penguin, if you're up in the crow's nest, you can do the next one. Uh, another 8 and 12. Uh, D20. Uh, 11. And then in a an 8 and 12 on this one. And then a perception check as well, please. So an 8 and a 7. Gotcha. Oh my god, I rolled a 3. So it's only a 15. So it's a little warmer than beforehand. And your vision is actually a little harder to make out, but your eyes are so good that you can tell uh, more than anyone else on the ship. And it's a little harder to see ahead of yourself. Oh, wait, I get uh, that. Uh, I got a D4 on that. Oh, you, that, that yeah, yeah, go for it. Right? Yeah, go for it. So 17. That's good. And the, the spyglass in particular, you can feel some level of imperviousness upon it because it starts to rain on that fifth day. And it rains the fifth and sixth days. Not super hard, 
but hard enough to be an annoyance. You do slip here and there on the deck at times. You do sort of splish and splash across it certain times. But nobody goes overboard, and everybody's okay. And you continue to make way. Uh, let's get one more roll from everybody. So D20, just a flat D20 from everyone. From everybody? Yep. Oh, no. What is this for? Oh, yes. It's a natural one from Vincent. Yeah, right. but is this a, um, like a random thing? Like, uh, yep. Okay, then that's fine. Awesome. <laughs> well, not awesome. Let us but... have it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where can I find this? Sounds like Vincent goes to T-Pose at the front of the ship, <sighs> and it goes horribly wrong. Nope. It's, uh, okay. So you are on the ship, and it is deep night. And as you are on the ship, deep into the night, you... Found me sleeping? Yep, you are all asleep. Uh, I am going to need, let me just find this. I am going to need a D100 roll, please. Vincent, uh, you roll the one, you do it. What? Yeah, your luck yeah, has got to change. Oh, yeah. It's your yeah. birthday. It's your birthday. Yeah, your luck, the luck has got to change. So. Uh, okay. Plus, you got those lucky dot. You got that luck. Uh, you got those luck rolls. I do, but is this count? Uh... Yeah, but we, we don't know if we want it to be low or high. Yeah. 37. 37. Let's see. That's exactly Sounds... what you needed. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So you are all sound asleep when you suddenly feel the ship jostle to the left hard. Oh, no. Kraken! <laughs> you hear enough. a shout from up above. And you hear suddenly a bell ring. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. What? What do you guys do? I'll uh, get yeah, I mean, on deck. Get, up, get, get the deck. Up and jumps outside, yeah. I'd say, uh, Sir Venom, in the water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> he's going to get eaten in one bite by like some a, giant he's fish he's monster. Like Aquaman. He's just throwing him overboard right away. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pitch black out. You really can't see, so you have no idea what's out there. So you I know, we, bait, we know. attach him to a fishing pole, and then stick him in the water. Yeah, I'm always, uh, I'm emitting light as well. My okay. first instinct is that it's a kraken. Okay. As you come up on deck and you look around, and the light from both your helm and your sword, Riku, sort of illuminate what's happening off the side of the ship. You can see that the ship, and you have to hold on. Uh, so actually, everybody give me a dexterity saving throw. Wow. What is up tonight? Uh, yeah, I'm only rolling oh, like oh, three and lower. That's in danger. I still roll two oh, seven. that wasn't... Uh, I'm going to say that, Riku, you go prone. And mine's, mine's an 11. An 11 from Vincent. Axel, you end up going prone as well. Uh, and this is, um, I'm going to say that this is not good for danger science. You don't, you're not I, able to catch I rolled two, I rolled the same number twice anyway. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Um, and Sir Venom, you're okay. You sort of catch yourself with your wings. And Vincent, you're, you're used to this on a ship a little bit, but the ship is pitched to the left at such an angle because the ship is suddenly caught in a whirlpool. Am I able to uh, get to my feet and then like take up my broom? And um, Because the ship's unstable, just start riding my broom? You are able to do so. Um, okay. That said, you can see that the crew is fighting hard to get control of the ship so that you are not sucked into the center of the whirlpool. And so this is going Why? to be a, a set of checks for everyone. I have a quick question. Yeah. What um what would happen 
if I like summon a whirlpool going in the opposite direction of this whirlpool, would they cancel out? Uh, you could try to do that if you so wish. This is a relatively large whirlpool. Let me describe the size of it. Um, it is uh, over a hundred feet across. It's quite large, probably about 115 to 120 feet across in terms of the diameter. You are moving rapidly within it. Every five to ten seconds, you're moving about 25 to 35 feet within it, and the ship is swirling and shifting around. Um, so how large of a whirlpool can you make, Sir Venom? Um, I can make one that's 50 square feet and 25 feet deep. 50 square feet. What I will say is that that will counteract the whirlpool and lower it an entire class so that as if you can get three successes from your friends, you'll be able to pull yourselves out of the whirlpool. Otherwise, it would okay. be five successes. All right, so I'll do that. I'll cast control water. And see if I can slow the whirlpool down a little bit. Okay. Uh, you good. do so. And as you do, it's it's relatively successful. The ship is still caught inside the whirlpool, but it's significantly smaller. Uh, for the rest of you, to get out of the whirlpool, there's a number of different things that you can do. Uh, Riku, as the first mate, you can attempt to order around some of the crew or do something else. Um, yeah, R Riku's going to try to organize the people in, in whatever effort we're, we're making to uh, escape the whirlpool. He's going to be flying around, like, coordinating. Gotcha. Uh, Vincent and Axel, what are you doing? Um, what would Vincent be doing for a whirlpool problem? I'm also kind of providing light by flying around, I suppose, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good call. Um, I guess I would just be, um, look, uh, whirlpool, I don't know. I would just go lend a hand, I guess. See see who's panicking and you, try to uh read my job description. Says helping strap down crew members in storm. So Okay. Yeah. I whatever if that's something I would do in a world pool. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that, that'll probably end up helping if, if you want to go about attempting to keep the crew on board and uh, in place. Yeah, if you want to make like an athletics check or something to do that, go for it. Athletics. Ooh, that 20. It's a big roll. <laughs> okay. You could tie and... <laughs> like a rope around everyone's belt and then like have Axel just hold it. Uh, Riku, what are you doing as he's doing that? You're doing a persuasion check to convince everyone to do their jobs better? Yeah, and then to like cooperate with this plan of uh, the rope and Axel holding it so people don't fucking fall overboard. Okay. And Vincent, what are you doing? Uh, just helping whoever needed help. I don't okay. know. So. Okay, so uh, go ahead and make the persuasion check. Uh, and then if there's some sort of check that you My think you should goodness. use... That's not bad, necessarily, no. Riku. That is a success, technically. I've just been having trip. such uh, low rolls all night. What type of roll do you want to make for this, Vincent, then? Um, in athletics or uh, acrobatics to try to, like, run around and try to help whoever needs help. Gotcha. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Okay. So the DC was a 10. Because uh, Sir Venom lowered the uh, DC from a 15 to a 10 because he made the whirlpool smaller. Vincent, you actually succeeded, and you ran over, and a rope started to go flying over the side, and you rushed over and grabbed it acrobatically. You sort of slid on the, the wet deck and then put your feet up against the, the siding and grabbed it and put a knot around one of the big um, metal hooks on the ship. Um, and Axel, as you did this, you were about to go over the side, Vincent, and Axel runs over and grabs you by the top and back of your shell so you don't fly over as the ship pitches and tilts. Oh. And Riku, you yelled at everyone to get starboard to hold more weight on that side of the ship, and they all sort of climb over and do so, and you teeter 
off the side of the whirlpool and out of it. Nice. And into open water. And the rain continues to beat down quietly, silently. That was a close call, guys. But we Good did teamwork, it. everyone, Riku would say. Great job. Well done, everyone. Are the sea be a harsh mistress? And your boat moves across open water quietly <clears throat> at this point. Uh, sort of does the cleaning hands, uh, you know, hands are clean and goes right back to bed. And the rest of one night. Yeah, the rest of the night goes by calmly, slowly, without issue. And you pass another day on the open waters. We're hopefully making our, progress, our boys. Hopefully, our crew approves of the way we handled that situation. Uh, they did. I mean, they absolutely did. You got them out of there successfully. It didn't necessarily lower or raise your morale of them, but they're alive, so therefore they're happy. We did our job. Um, who would like to do another roll for us? No more rolls? For, for navigating? Oh. Yeah, navigating for... a little bit more. Oh, that's what the... I thought. I did, the, did first the first one. one. Okay. I, I can uh I can do the second one. Yelling out the directions from the crow's nest using my fancy spyglass. Okay. Um, so you get plus four. Oh, I'm gonna need it because I rolled a one. No, no, no. Uh, do you... you better uh -oh. re-roll that, brother. So roll a sixteen with a one. I will say that's good enough. The DC was a 15 Oof. because you can see a little speck of fog and what you believe to be land. It looks like a small island nice. down to the southwest. Ooh. Land ho! I yell out from the crow's nest and like point in the direction. Excellent. And at this, Captain, Captain Davis and Jones is very confused. He goes, it's, it's not on any of the charts. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Land hold there's no 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 no. We're still thirteen days roughly from the Corin Archipelago. But there's, there's no land here. What do we what? he goes, There's no way. We can't we're not in the wrong spot. Can't check your maps. Check your maps. Maybe, maybe it's a maybe it's a secret island that's on the back of a giant. Uncharted no. cap. Oh no, we time traveled. Uncharted cap. He he begins pulling out a sexton to like measure the sun measure the distance and he goes uh, we're no more than 20 miles off course at most like we we've not even been traveling for f long enough and fast enough i i don't understand hmm. L let me say this i think i think it's got to be you got to be right it's got to be uncharted um i have a closer look you think so i mean i don't know i think so he looks around. Um, normally, this sort of thing's put to the crew for a vote, but if if you think there's a chance the Dancing Devils are over there, then I'll just have to listen to you. It could be it could be a, a jump off. They could be resting there until their next uh, part of the voyage. Ooh, I'm, you're not wrong. I All know. Right. <laughs> All right, we'll do it. Hold on. What if they are there? We catch them off. Yeah, like a, yeah, go get, get like a rowboat out. No, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, I mean, I can get you a lot closer than this. And he begins shouting out directions to get you in the area of the island. So he'll be me again moving you in that direction. So let me pass us over there. As you begin to get closer, the fog begins to envelop your ship. No. Get out of here. And you can see a certain distance towards land. And I will open up quite a bit of this. And as you get closer through the fog, you can make out what appears to be shipwreck after shipwreck after shipwreck. Hmm. That's a great place oh. to sail a ship. 
I think we need to have a close look, guys. Preferably uh, away from all, away, away yeah. from the shipwrecks. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are up here, basically, and you're not really willing. Captain Davison is not really willing to get you too much closer, just because of how <clears throat> scary it looks down there. So, right. how far would you say? Is this accurate? Yeah, it should be. Really read it because it's so small. Said about 280. Okay. Right. Uh, Riku looks to the to the guys and says, "I can take us ashore." And he looks to his, "Oh, well, one of you, I can take you with me." Are you trying to fly on your broom? Because I mean, Sir well, I mean, Ven Sir Venom can fly by himself, and that's uh, what I'm saying. Vincent's you know. a turtle, so he can just swim. So why don't you take me with you in your broom? Look at this. We got a little rowboat we can take. Captain yeah, Davison yeah. does say you, you can also take the rowboat if you so wish. Yeah. Uh, sure. I also I have, uh, I have a water walk spell, too. Let's not get too fancy about it. Yeah, let's just take the, the rowboat. Or at least uh, not be long. Axel. If you want to fly on your broom, you can fly on your broom. Axel will get in the rowboat because we might need it. Yeah, no, I, I want to kind of out ahead with Sir Venom while you guys are making your way over. Alright. So me me and Riku will uh <clears throat> team up. Go getting on the uh, a little bit from the air. Yep. You get in here, Benson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, I I'm putting you yeah, on. Yeah, just start, yeah, put me on. Where are we? On me and you are on a rowboat. How, uh, how do I? Can, yeah, you attach, can you attach us to it? Yeah, I can totally attach you to it. Give me a moment here. Let's see. Oh, uh, it looks like Vincent's already attached. Actually, you're both attached. All right. Oh. Oh wait. Oh, you know what? You're attached to the other ship. Ah. My bad. So I can put you on the right, right one. There we go. All right, so you guys are in the rowboat. Sweet. Let's make this official. <laughs> All right. And where are you? <laughs> hold up right there, Axel. Where are Riku and Sir Venom flying? Uh, towards the shore. We're just like getting a little bit of altitude and uh, trying to scout it out as they're approaching. And uh, go ahead and uh, place yourselves on the map where that is. I guess we'd just be like a little bit further ahead. Okay. As you get to this point, passive perceptions of 22, is that correct, Sir Venom? It is. Rico's is 19, if that matters. Uh, that's actually good enough because you see a skeletal figure floating under the water, begin to move and pop its head up with what appears to be a rifle to take a shot at you. What? <laughs> Perfect. So I am going to have to ask everybody to roll initiative. Whoa. Excellent. This is just what we wanted. Give the people what they want. Yeah. And as you look around... You see dozens of skeletal figures bobbing their way to the surface of the water, aiming and ready to fight. About to get firing squatted. Sir Venom got a 23. Okay. All right. Sir Venom, what would you like to do? Uh, let's see. I think first I am going to empower my no longer a raven but parrot simulator with a fourth level slot. And I don't have any of my tokens. 
because I'm on my tablet. Oh, I can try to drop something for you. I got Is it okay if I drop your elephant? Pirate, pirate, pirate themed parrot, if you got one. Pirate themed parrot, let me see. All right, I got that. Sorry, it'll just be a moment as I make this token. Okay. And I'm going to summon him around, I don't know if I, oh, that is work, around that guy. I'm going to summon him. All right. Ooh, the 25 to hit him. Dang. So you want it? Uh, let me think. Yeah, this, this guy is closest. Gotcha. Pirate parrot it is. And a 25 hit to hit? Yep. Okay, that is a hit for sure. And you hit the skeleton cannoneer. For how much damage did you say? Uh, let's see. So 2d8 plus 6. So 13 damage. And what type of damage is it? Uh, force damage. Force damage, cool. Um, yeah, the the parrot just whooshes against it and bashes against its bones. And it tries to block it with its little hand arm cannon, which is basically like a shotgun. Um, but it's unable to do so, and you, you do the damage to it. And uh, is it still up? It is still up. All right, so in that case, I will... Damn, I so close. I am going to cast Raven Queen Black Flame on him. Um, ooh, or actually, these are all undead guys, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're skeletal, skeletal, you said, right? Yeah, skeletal in nature. So I think I have... I can probably do some of my cleric stuff. You are a cleric. All right, so I will. I'll go right here. And I will channel my divinity. Okay. But and I I'll... will do so using one of my fancy items. Which increases the save DC by two. How far out does that go? Um, let me get back to it. Uh, within 30 feet of me. 30 feet of you. It must make a wisdom saving throw, and the DC is 20. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go find that. Oops, hold on. So I think it goes up to, like, here, by the looks of it. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay. I think these guys are going to... Hell, most likely by the looks of it, but we'll give them a roll. Um, wisdom. Yep. Well, that's you natural one. That's a natural one for that guy. Uh, this guy gets a. Geez, um, natural three. This guy gets a. <laughs> two. Uh, and this cannoneer. Wow, they all fell. Ooh. Okay. And, and what, um, what is their what is their CR rating? 
Uh, most of them are Is above it... a one, Aww. except for that first one. So anyone below a one is instantly destroyed. Okay. And everyone above a one. Those guys destroyed. Um, let's see. A turn for one minute. Okay. So they everybody can... else is turned. Yeah. So no reactions, and they can only use a dash action to try to escape. And do they get more saving throws against that or not? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Wow. Okay. So those guys are turned. And is that your full turn? Um, yeah. Movement action, bonus action. Okay. Uh, Axel, what would you like to do? Um, what are the rules as far as movement while on this boat? I would say that the boat can move, um, because of your strength, the boat can move 40 feet per turn. Okay, and why be, can I dash? Does dash is dashing a thing in a boat? Yeah, it is, and you can use your normal rogue stuff for, to do that, for instance. Okay, uh, so let's see, so 40. Um... Okay, so this guy is 60 feet over here. And are they, like, are they standing in the water, or are they, like, swimming up? Uh, they're swimming up. Mm. Hmm. All right. Some of them are able to stand, based on what, what's going on under, underneath the water. I'm going to bring us... I'm going to use my... Movement and my bonus action, I'm going to use a uh, cunning action to dash over to um, that, yeah, that guy right there. And uh, I know Vincent's going to want to, like, uh, like shoot. shoot. So I'm going to, like, <laughs> can I, like, drift and, like, yeah. uh, just sick drift? Let's, let's come and ask first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right there, and... Tokyo Drift. Yeah. And then, uh, kind of... So, I want to engage with this guy. Can I ask him a question from here? Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm going to hit him. Okay. Ooh, uh, okay. Let's see if I remember how to play this game. Uh, great Weapon Master, recklessly attack this guy that I'm standing next to. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't think I'm hitting. Cause I uh, rolled. I can't see what I rolled, but it, it wasn't that high. Sixteen. Uh, that's good enough. You actually do hit this guy. All right. Uh, forward the damage. So I'm not. I'm not raging. So it's twenty nine. Cause a great weapon master. And then uh, we're going to sneak attack him. Okay. He, didn't, he didn't know I could do all this. He's surprised. And then Good. another. So that is the dice keep, the dice keep rolling over my numbers. Uh, so 29, 29 plus 9. So 29 oh. plus 9. So 38, do you, did you add the two for your rage as well? I'm not raging, because I used my bonus oh. action. Yeah, I went to my bonus action to... Uh, my bad. Yeah. Is this guy still up? Uh, he is not. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and des describe how you do this. Well, you know, I saw all these skeletons, and I'm like, what, what the hell? And I, you know, zoom over on the boat, zip around, and uh, skull crack them with the great axe. He dies. And his skull actually goes flying and skips across the water into one of these black uh, sort of spires pointing out over the ocean. Okay. Um, and shit, how much movement? Did I, I think I used like 60, maybe 70. So 
I, I want to say actually to do the turn in particular, that's going to take up the the other twenty yeah. feet of your move. Yeah, like totally. I'm out of melee range. So yeah, I think that's everything I can do, uh, and I okay. will end my turn there. Okay. Um. Okay. Skeletons all begin to swarm towards you. <coughs> And I'm just going to move Damn. everything. Let's rock. A lot closer. Um, basically, all these guys move up to here. Um, and as they do so, they move as a swarm, almost like a hive mind or something, simultaneously swimming towards you except for those that are afraid and i'll move them far farther away um and they are beginning to close on you now that being said it's a problem for some of them because they realize that riku and sir venom are in the air and they can't necessarily get to them but i'm going to take a bunch of shots at them with the cannoneer uh there's a is Riku within 30 feet of me? Riku is probably just within 30 feet. Nope, 45. Oh, nope. Sorry, Riku. Um, so uh, undead have disadvantage on attack rolls against me because of that um, that item, the icon of Ravenloft. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, uh, let's see. So the cannoneer is going to take a shot at you. It's going to be a 22 to hit. Damn. You have to have it equipped. And is this against going... Riku? No, this is against you. Oh, he's got disadvantage. Oh, my bad. Gotcha. Let me roll that again. Okay. So it was a 12 then. Oh, yeah. That's a miss. Okay. And so the, the cannon goes off and he misses. Um... Uh, he then ends his turn loading the cannon. Uh, there is a rifleman, or actually, there's several riflemen, and they are all going to take shots at you. Um, let's see. There's one, two, three, and it looks like they all miss. Uh, and then Axel, you're going to have three riflemen take shots at you. Uh, they think. Did you use great weapon master? Or sorry, um, reckless attack. I did, but the guy who I recklessly attacked is dead. So I think he's okay. the only one that would have had advantage. Gotcha. Uh, there's a 15. I think that's gonna miss by the looks of it. Yeah, an eight. Uh, 21. Ooh, and a 22. So it looks like two dead riflemen are going to hit you. Uh, for a total of 10. Did that not do that? One? That's like still rolling. That's kind of annoying. Uh, 13. And that's going to be... These guys are uh, hard. Yeah, they do. They got rifles. Uh, that's going to be a total of 27, 32 points of damage. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so I have uncanny dodge now that I can use as a yep. reaction. Does that count for the total damage or just one of the attacks I can have? Hmm. Let's double check that. Uncanny dodge. <clears throat> just one of the attacks. All right, I'll have the 13 then. Okay. So that's going to be, it actually has the um, necrotic damage as well. So it's only going to be nine points of damage from that one. So then it would oh, be okay. 20, 24 points of damage total. Total? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there's the skeleton next to you who climbs into the boat. Oh my god. And this one will... It's a skeleton commander, and he Damn. will. Sounds like I should have saved my reaction for him. But is he going to hit? He's... What's he got? Uh, I'm wondering what he's going to do. He's going to use his pike to attack twice. 
Yeah. So he will do a nine, and then that's a miss. And he will do a 17. Oh, that, that's my AC. So okay. is, what happens with the tie? Uh, he, it's a hit. Okay. And the pike is going to do 13 more points of damage. Okay. That's... Okay, so that works. And I think that's <clears throat> their turns for now, which brings us to Riku. Nice. Let me see. Uh, my movement is on this here broom. Flying speed of 50. Okay. Uh, well, there's bad everywhere, huh? Oh, yeah. I think uh, Sir Venom, don't leave Sir Venom hanging. I'm going to go here first. I'll have another 50 movement. And I'm going to swing my sword at this here skeleton man. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. So because it's undead, I'm going to get an extra D8 of damage. Pluses that. Plus that and that. I get a D6 for my helmet as well. Oh, wow. So that's, uh, looks like 17 radiant and 3 fire damage. Okay, how would you like to do this? Um, Riku goes up, sees the skeleton, uh, you know, going behind Sir Venom, and uh, gives it a clean slice down the middle, and it just crumbles. You know, turns to vapor because it's uh, blasted with holy light. Gotcha. And he's going to use his second attack on this one. So close. <laughs> Fifteen radiant and then another six fire damage. Okay. So is this guy still up? Uh this one is still up. Well, Riku's going to uh he's gonna do some bard stuff here. My bonus action, I'm using. That is rough. Uh, one more damage, and then I get a plus one of my AC. So my AC is now 18. Okay. Also, I'd want to, uh, as Riku gets close to me, I want to yell out to him, to him oh, Riku, stick close to me. I might as well protect you from the undead. Because if you're, if you're within 30 feet of me, they'll have a disadvantage against you as well. Um, is that their full turn, Riku? Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, Vincent, what would you like to do? Vincent's going to shoot some people. Uh, so Vincent's going to shoot at the cluster to the south. With a, the guy in the front with a snipe shot. That is a hit. <clears throat> so we'll start off with uh, 22 damage. Is it this guy or this guy? Or this um, guy? No. Uh, let's go with um, oh, the guy that just moved. Oh, was that I me? Move back. That yeah, that, that guy. Okay. Um, 22 damage? So, yep. Go ahead and describe how he dies. Um, he is just going to uh, he's just going to take the fall, and because I'm going to turn that arrow into a bursting shot. Oh, nice! Which, so it'll just kind of disintegrate or explode. 
Um, and what type of damage does that do? Is it bludgeoning or force? Um, I, uh, let me check. Because I do not know. Let me see. Uh, grasping shot, not that one. Come on. Force, force damage. Force? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. All right, so that means that uh, everybody in um, a five-foot range. Yeah, you've got two guys there who will get hit by that. Yeah. There it is. Uh, we'll take 2d6. Okay. Um, which is boom boom. That's really good because there's not even like a save against that. Uh, uh, so ten damage. Okay, that actually is going to. Oh, it does not kill any of those guys. Okay. Uh, actually, no, that that kills the rifleman. I'm sorry, that kills the rifleman there as well. Excellent. Uh, then um, I'll take a shot at, uh, I guess, this guy. Okay. Uh, uh, and I guess I'll just, so here, he took 10 damage, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um. I'm just trying to think, do I need the extra snipe damage? Uh, is it worth it? But uh, Yeah, might as well. Everything's a snipe shot these days. We're good. <laughs> All right. And with a plus 13, like, might as well. Well, but then it's minus 5. Uh, so that's so the thing 19... with just having a plus 8 here. That's still pretty fucking good. So 19. Yeah, that's a hit. Damage. Yeah. 19 damage. Okay. And that one... I think that one is... Yep, that one's down as well. All right. Is that your full turn? Um, yeah. That should Before be all uh, Vincent ends his turn, I have a question about the main boat that we came from. Yeah. Uh, what's the range on their cannons? Uh, the range on their cannons. Let me find that. That's a very good question. I believe it's five hundred feet. Because I feel like if shots are going off and they hear a ruckus and they see a swarm of these skeletons coming at us, they maybe would like take some shots from their cannons. Gotcha. Like, I mean, obviously we have no way of communicating with them, but, like, they, they can't be, totally be dumb. Um, I'm going to say that they can see you beginning to fight, and on this round they're loading. Okay. And it looks like it's 1,200 feet, so it's, they can fire pretty yeah. far. So on this round they're loading, and they'll begin to unleash volleys in some of the next upcoming rounds. Um... Anything else? Or that was Vincent's full turn? Yeah, that was Vincent's turn, yep. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the round, a new foe appears. And I think that this is roughly where we're going to end it this evening. But this new foe, you can see these wings emerge. And I'll make this token large so you can see what it, this is and what it looks like. Because this foe emerges on top of the spire. And you can see her come up the side of this black spire from some sort of nest area. And she looks like a harpy wearing a golden crown and a black staff in her hand. And you can hear her unearthly cry echo out across the water. I need all of you to make wisdom saving throws. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh. Six 
Do we get to decide whether we roll uh, session inspiration before we find out, or I will let you roll a session inspiration if you so wish. But I want to know if I've passed the check. Uh, I will say, <laughs> I will say, so, Riku so and Axel, you have so Riku and Axel, you've both failed. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. I mean, it's the end of the yeah. I'll know. I mean, you gotta still try to re-roll it, you know. Roll him if you got him. Yeah. Used mine earlier. 17. Well, he already. Wait. And. Oh, Riku, you, you used yours earlier. Okay. 17 succeeds. That was exactly what you oh, needed. Oh. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> because Vincent succeeded <laughs> and you were very close. Um, Riku, you, however, mm-hmm. are charmed. Oh, I'm, my God. I'm advantage against being charmed. Oh, oh go ahead and roll. Roll God, plot twist. Let's see. Oh. Thirteen. Yeah, still not good enough. Uh, you are charmed by this harpy necromancer, and as she gives out this cry, she gives off this necrotic energy from the black staff in her hands, and you can feel all of the undead that you killed reforming. No. Oh. Exactly where they stood, and the frightened ability wearing off of them. Oh my god. And this is where we're going to end it tonight, I think. I can't attack her because I'm charmed, right? Uh, That is correct. The charmed condition is... uh, Let's see. It's a shame because she's the one we need to actually kill to make these skeletons go away. A charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magic effects. You have advantage. Oh, they have advantage to interact socially with you. Hmm. So they might. She might try to convince Ooh, you. We're to gonna get something. seduced. Um, but yeah, this is where we're gonna leave it in a pitched battle with a number of undead skeletons swimming their way towards you and a necromancer, a harpy necromancer atop her spire convincing you to do things that you probably don't want to do no <laughs> <laughs> say it ain't so <laughs>